I'm just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing how you took that as an insult. If you mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, to absolutely, to because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the last show of O'Reilly Radio for 2016. No, we're not going away. No, no, no. Just for 2016. This is the last show of the calendar year, episode 138. This is uh, kind of a special. We're going to do a year in review, just kind of touch base on all the things that we have learned, or at least as many of them as we can remember and yet still keep uh, keep our wits about us. Um, this is, of course, O'Reilly Radio. Uh, recorded Friday, December 30th, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I have my usual suspects. I have Stephen Griffith, who is making coffee. I have Daniel Atherton, who is with us directly beneath me on the video screen. And in the other corner, we have uh, David O'Connor. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. What is up? We would have... um, we would have the, the wonderful Fred Sims as well, but today is his birthday, so wish him a happy birthday if you happen to find him out on the Facebook lands or anything like that. Um, yeah. He's apparently been with us for uh, 35 uh, navigations around the sun. So, oh. just, He's just a wee, a wee youngin, at least according to me. So, <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's like <laughs> 35 days older than me or something. Ah, there you go. Nice. Okay. Uh, so... Oh dear! Good 20, riddance, 2016. 2016 Let's get is that out of the way. Uh, yeah, it's it's just about gone. Um, we started the year uh, with O'Reilly Radio Show 190, and I was looking at that um, just to see what what happened. Uh, let's see. Something about complaints about Star Wars uh, successors being white slavers. That was fun. Um, Tesla's Gigafactory was just going to get into production. De- something about Detroit and job hunting felons and things like that. In fact, we, we were talking, uh, that was one of Fred's, uh, earlier episodes and he was talking about, um, about the, the IQ, uh, challenges in hiring law enforcement officers. Oh yeah. Maximum IQ. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. So that was that was fun. That that was a great way to start the year, let me tell you. <laughs> oh. And um and also since we've at the end of the year, we have noticed a rash of our uh our pop culture icons uh passing away. Well, we had that actually it started at the end of 2015 with Lemmy Kilmeister of Motorhead passing away. And then well, on, uh, on January next- 1st, it was uh, Natalie Cole Yep, Natalie Cole passed away. There's 130 celebrities. Yeah. There was a, somebody compiled a complete list. And then, I mean, David Bowie, and yep. now we have Carrie Fisher, quickly followed by her mother, Debbie Reynolds. Yep, 24 uh, hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, with that, uh, I know for me, with with Debbie Reynolds, uh, growing up and watching uh, the animated film charlotte's web that's that's where i first experienced her and her work yeah for me it was singing in the rain so yeah just um uh, she died a heartbreak i think really yeah just a, a little too much you know no one should have to bury their children no. she did yeah, manage to not have can't to hear you on the uh, twitch stream can't hear us on the twitch stream the, all, all the rest of us are fine, actually. I can hear everybody else. Can't hear Just me you. on the Twitch stream? <laughs> Just you. Uh, okay. It can be I wonder really without a kerfluffle. I wonder if they can hear me now. I have made a minor change. I wonder if they can hear me now. Of course, we'll find out in about 20 seconds. Anyway. Minor change? Minor change. Minor change. Uh, we yeah, have... I, can hear you, I can hear you now coming through it. Okay, excellent. Good. Well, terribly sorry for that. Uh, I hope that you catch us in the... Uh, in the after recordings, also I've got uh, I've got here Sprocket, our podcat. He is uh, he's joined us as well. And also my shoulder cat, rather large shoulder cat at that. Let's see, I actually can, yeah, you can see him a little better there. There we go. He's he's a good kitty. Okay, that was too bright. Okay, so 
<sighs> Let's see what else. Uh, what other other major things happened this year? Of course, it was it was a primary year. How can we not? How can we miss that in any way, shape, or form? With uh, most of the centrist and left leaning people going, what the about uh, how America made their choices? Well, yeah, we don't just have America. We also have the the rest of Western civilization seemingly leaning farther and farther to the right. Uh, we had, as a precursor to the, the calamities here, uh, the Brexit vote yes. over in Britain. Um, the rise of the radical right throughout Europe. Um, we had uh, Duarte over in the Philippines in his war on drugs. Uh, which has has claimed a number of innocent victims, um, and just the world's gotten a lot scarier just in one year. Yeah, and, and usually I usually I poo poo that notion that the world is scarier because the world is the world, and it's just whether or not we know about these things uh, that really makes an impact. But at this point, as we've been following the trends and just staying abreast of the news. These are these are some pivotal moments. These are the kind of things that you look at in history books later on. Of oh, these are the things that marched the world towards calamity. Mm. Mm. You know the mm. <laughs> the thing that Dan Carlin on hardcore history is going to going to really rip you about. You know that that's what's going on right now in the world. Um, was Greece was uh, 2015 right when when they yes were, so that. Yeah. No, I mean, oh, we, we now the Yalkada boys. What? Yalkada. Yalkada. Oh, Yalkada. Yeah, we, we we can. How can we possibly forget the ranchers? Um, we can try. My God, we can try. Well, yeah. they certainly got all their. <laughs> they got their fifteen minutes of fame plus, and a fifty-gallon drum of lube. Yeah. <laughs> And a bag full of dicks. Lots, lots of dicks. Would you like some gummy dicks to go, go with those latex dicks? All yeah. that, all that and more. Um, <laughs> Vader does not approve. That's a nice mug. That's a good, good Vader Stein. That was given to me by my friends for, 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 my, for birthday slash Christmas. I'm like, yes, I approve. Is that, is, is that a uh, picture of a doctor? Dr. Vader Stein? <laughs> Dr. Vader Stein? Nice. Um... Yeah, so that that happened actually really early in uh, in 2016. The yeah, the occupation, the occupation of the Mallor National Wildlife Refuge. Um, we did we did an awful lot of following the money. Mm-hmm. A lot of following the money uh, this yep. year. Uh, there's a lot of that. We also had uh, the. Let's see here, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, we had a number mm-hmm. of natural disasters. Uh, corporations behaving badly. Um, yeah. but, and at the same moment, we uh, had a number of breakthroughs in science that are incredibly exciting. And we'll actually probably start seeing the fruits of those labors and those breakthroughs in the next year or more likely the year after. Absolutely, absolutely. With um, uh, manatees, were off the endangered species list. Mm-hmm. Um, Robot Wars was rebooted. That was fun, and it, that it's great. That's a good thing. We have the White Rabbit Project for those who used to follow mm-hmm. Myth, MythBusters that mm-hmm. just launched yeah. on Netflix. Uh, the Juno spacecraft set a solar power distance record. So we got some we got some good stuff that's going on out there, certainly and still and consistently. You know we don't want to overshadow it. We had the Summer Olympics and the Zika virus. Oh yes, all the all the Brazil stuff, all the Brazil yeah. stuff. So I'm, all the air, all the airlines, especially Malaysian ones, crashing or being shot down. Oh, just a, just a bit. Yeah, the shot. Oh, geez. Yeah. I forgot about them being shot down. That is atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. But it did happen. Uh, 
Eminem. Then we had a number of shootings, tragedies, uh, a SpaceX explosion. And a successful landing. Lots of successes yes. with SpaceX as well, um, kind of the, overshadowing um, it. <clears throat> the shootings are now so prevalent that the news no longer widely covers them. Yeah, but that was happening even before. I think that was kind of taking place. That, that kind of worked its way in, in 2016. Um, yeah. We exceeded the 400 parts per million. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we crossed the magic numbers of, uh, of yep. oh, my God, we're all going to die. And, ah, there there we go. I'm sorry, Mama Van. Yes, you are out there in the chat room. I just didn't have your... Uh, have your window up. It was uh, being overshadowed by David. So, sorry about that. But yes, now you can talk to us directly. <laughs> you were part of the live stream, so thank you Thank you for coming back. Um, oh. There was the coordinated bombings in Brussels, in Belgium. Yeah. Bombings in Turkey. Bombings everywhere. The, uh, the, the truck running down the, the people in Nice. Yes. North Korea being more aggressive and launching a Rocket into space. Um, Wait, did they launch it into space? I know that they were. That was in February. I don't think we. I don't think we actually mentioned that one. Hmm. Mm. But we've also had uh, competition over islands in the South China Sea. Yeah, China has been continuing to build up more land out there so they can take it over. Um. We changed our format a couple times yeah. <laughs> during the yeah, year yeah. here. Uh, added some new new hosts, uh, new guests, lots of interviews, and some some really cool things did happen. At least you know for our show, mm-hmm. um, twenty seventeen is definitely going to look wonderful for that. Uh, Jeez. See, uh, Juno arrived at Jupiter, right? And and being just utterly successful in all those things. Um. The yep, de- she's keeping an eye on her husband. Yeah. <laughs> the Deadpool movie, uh, that came out. Lots of good yeah, movies. Lots of good movies. And it's year. fantastic. Yep. Well, there was there was a lot of, of really good and really awful art throughout the year, uh, yeah. both television, cinema, and otherwise. Yeah, a bunch of good movies came out this year. So uh, the, the Rise of Hamilton as a musical. Um, and then we had... Uh, let's see here. Other cultural touchstones throughout the year. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, lots. Of- Aside from the passing of all of our celebrities. Well, Florida was still bad Florida. and pivotal. And, you know, lots of Florida man and Florida woman uh, stories in the news. Yeah, we fi- Florida man finally got a partner. Florida woman. Yeah, there was a Florida woman. Finally coming to her own. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um. Um, Yay for the, gender equality? Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, we had the Pulse shooting. Uh, that happened. Yeah. Yeah. It affected a lot of us locally. Um, so we had that noted tragedy, which... Uh, we gathered together as a nation to collectively go meh. <laughs> a lot of people went meh. A lot yeah. of things. Uh, again, we have not had a step forward we, on gun We did control. not do anything meaningful as a result. A lot of people lost nope. their crap over Gorilla. Harambe. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Um, Flint, Michigan's yeah. water crisis. Yeah. Uh, and the continuing fallout. Uh, the death of Antonin Scalia and the blockading of the appointment mm-hmm. for his replacement by a Republican-controlled House um, and Senate. Yeah, uh, ten- Tennessee ended up with a uh, a, a state rifle. Um, and we can't forget about HB two. Yeah, I can't really. No, how uh, how on earth could we? Um, Nor should we. No. Uh, and then of course the the primaries. <laughs> those happened. <sighs> those happened. So, th- that, those did happen. Yes. That those. that that was a thing. Um, still hurts me, man. Still hurts me. You know, you know it's. I'm still wondering why we haven't seen any. No, wait. Why am I? Why am I thinking that I'm even wondering? No. 
Uh-oh. Uh, we haven't seen any what? Any, anything about it. You know, there's ha- there hasn't been any reform. Nothing is going to be changed. No. The zero zip nil. Because uh, every yeah. single person that voted, a, a lot of people that are being shown now who voted for him going, oh, look all the changes going to be happening. We're going to finally have a voice. Look how our lives are going to be better because if he's going to get in there and he's going to do all these things. And he's literally going, no, that's not what I'm doing. I literally just said those things to put so I could be in office. You're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, also, on the Democratic he, front, we've been promised after the fallout from from Hillary's loss, or and as well as Hillary's victory in the primaries, that things are going to change. Mm-hmm. So far, the only slight single glimmer that we might be able to see some change within the Democratic Party is the DNC chair. Um, there's going to be a race. And there's actually a progressive that that is in the running. We'll see if he actually gets the position. Draining the swamp right in the White House. Yeah. Yeah. The White um, House is now the swamp. It seems a little little uh, muggy over there. Don't yeah. forget how much that our new president loves Putin. Oh man! Oh yeah. Well, we're we're going to touch on that in a minute. Let's let's it's carry on with romance. other other things that might have been might have been in in uh, twenty sixteen. Um, there was a judge that uh, thought a three year old could represent him herself in an immigration case because yeah. we had so many young immigrants. <sighs> we had an immigration crisis. Of course, there's the Syrian refugees. This wasn't even a, even a part of that. This was just people evacuating from Central America. We didn't want them. Well, no, we never want them. We we, we have, have a we, real we bad do. case. No, we have a real bad case of NIMBY in the United States. Not in well, my I mean, backyard. It can be in their backyard. Yeah, we're not, we're so not picky and choosy with, with refugees and the yeah. vetting process that they go through. We typically can't like the best. <laughs> yeah, well, let's, all, let's also society. break that down a bit because as you know, actual data will show mm-hmm. – uh, Immigration's actually really good for a country. It's been really good for us in the past, and we'd really like to, in truth, increase it more. Except yeah. it's always easy to blame the immigrants on all the ills in the country. And so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in brighter news, uh, a man has an implant that allows him to see color. That's cool. Mm hmm. Um, or no, it was hear color. He could hear color. I'm yeah, he could hear it. That's right. Um, which is still just like, wait, what? Unique. Um, uh, they, um, we invented, they, we developed a bacteria that can eat plastic. I don't yes. know if we, 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 I don't think we covered it yet, but there is a, um, a chip they can implant into your eye that gives you like, it's a very low resolution sight, but it restores sight. To people who have yeah, they, they've they've been working on that for for a long time. I think the resolution has gone up. Uh, you know, it's like it's like going from you know the Nintendo to the Super Nintendo. You know, it's that level of update kind of thing. We we've it, also seen uh, a number of re- revolutionary turns in uh, <clears throat> the field of of replacement limbs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, now you can three D print. Those, especially arms and hands, you can you can three D print. Um, yeah. That's actually happening in our backyard over at UCF. Is getting all that coding out so and mm-hmm. getting it dispersed so it can be used. Uh, breast cancer trials, uh, you know, a lot lot of new cancer treatments. Uh, one that destroys breast breast cancer tumors in just eleven days. Fantastic. Um, there was a, uh, a biologist discovered, a, another bacteria that eats pure electrons. What the? Which just completely redefines what we think of as physics like, and yeah, it's just like a just, lot. What? Yeah, <clears throat> so. Well, it, that would make a very efficient bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder how well, we could use that. But, well, there's a problem. It eats electrons, so I don't think it can bring about positive change. Oh man, really? <laughs> wow, you went there. Beautiful. That's I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Had to. Sorry. Good melvin. Right off the top of your head. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um 
Let's see what else. Um, oh yeah, anti-vax. The anti-vax movement yeah. went into super overdrive and then kind of hit a wall. <clears throat> that yeah, wall, that being... wall was the election. No, no, yeah. that wall wasn't the election. That wall was the. Oh hi! You are now seeing measles and thankfully not smallpox, but all these other things have been you know eradicated. Measles. Suddenly coming back. Measles outbreaks throughout yeah. California. Yeah, we had doctors getting horrifically pissed off at the fact they have to look at these mothers and go, yes, hi, please now invest in a tiny coffin because you have just killed your child. Yeah, tiny tiny coffin industry really went booming on that, uh, which is really, really, really sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was I also mean, the rise having- of the drones. Lot mm-hmm. of yes. drones and and quadcopters and the FAA then restricting the size of the drone that you can use without having a a license kind of um, kind of deal. Well, no, no, actually, I there's a now having a drone and looking at making money with things. I now know what all these are. It's not restricting the size to to having a license. Any drone of a certain size, you have to register, which the registration is like five bucks. But typically for commercial use, um, then you have to have a, like a, a sport you have license. to have an actual freaking pilot's license. Yeah. Which okay, you want to operate this little quadcopter? Cool, everything else. You want to maybe make money with it? You got like a one of the DJI Phantoms. You want to do mm-hmm. some movies? Want to shoot some video with it? Shoot some photos? Cool. Well, okay, you've registered it, but then have you also paid the four thousand to twelve thousand dollars it costs you to get your pilot's license? Because that's what it takes to. You have to have that before you t- get the FAA certs for being able to do commercial drone usage. Good uh, heavens! Yeah, which which uh, let's let's be honest, not very many people are doing. I no. think honestly, it was a it was their emergency stopgap. Going, oh crap! What the hell do we do? Okay, let's do this, and that will give us time to figure out what to actually do. Well, it, I don't know if they're going to yeah. now actually do something. They're going to go. Well, this is good enough. They thought about it. They thought about it real hard, but I don't think they, they didn't really. Yeah, but this I, is the world of Trump. When, Do we really need an FAA anyway? When someone can no, no, build it out of, when someone can just build it out of parts, mm-hmm. you cannot enforce it. I mean, it's, all you can do is find them after the fact. That does yeah. not prevent them from doing it in any way. Oh yeah, no, you can do it. So, it's just, no, I, I, I mean, get fine. On on YouTube, there are people that have built aircraft carriers that are quadcopters. Oh, yeah. I mean, like big 12-inch fan rotors, four of them, lifting up the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. Okay, that's no, it's the cool. Avengers carrier. No, no, carrier. no, no, no. They, they attached it to the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier and then landed another airplane on it. Okay, that's just freaking cool. Okay, so... That is way beyond the weight limit. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> for the FAA. Just so pay your five bucks, and you're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, are are they making money off the channel? <clears throat> yeah. Could it then be considered? Well, I guess no. Well, yeah. There's. Then we get into the taxes. It's yeah. always the taxes that kill you. So if you end well, up ma- making enough money for it to no longer be a hobbyist thing. Yeah. Then it becomes a profession, and then you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fun things. So, um, I ended up doing a lot more uh, video for the for the show. A lot of a lot of investment for for this show in particular, uh, which will then lead into more shows next year. Yeah, because this is this is now almost we are two days away from my technical one year anniversary with the show. That's right. And I can see because I started January first, two thousand sixteen. Yep. And I can say, yeah, we've technically wise, we've had a lot of advancements in that time frame. I'm, we've come a ways. Yeah, and more to come. More to come. I'm, I'm still working on a Skyposaurus. It's not very easy, <laughs> and I'm going to have to invest even more into it. But uh, I've got some some old hand me down laptops that are ready for the for the challenge, and you know, one of them is actually doing the. Uh, doing the sound effects for us right now. So 
that's that's working. Oh, the uh, speaking of drones, also the Drone Racing League did also uh, yes. come about, yes. which is just that amazing. This, which I'm hoping to get into at some point in the future. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I one of the reasons I want a drone is because yeah, I want to use it for commercial. You know, take stock photos and try to sell them, mm. but also learn how to fly it and do all that for the purpose of later on, probably trying to get into drone racing because there's yeah. I'm I wasn't allowed to be an Air Force fighter pilot, and that's not going to happen now. And actual flying a plane, as we've just discussed, is yep. really freaking expensive. It is. So I would have no problem strapping on a pair of VR goggles and watch myself flying at 80 plus miles an hour through an obstacle course. I just think that would be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And when we have yeah. real life uh, video game. spaces here in Central Florida that are excellent for that, um, mm-hmm. thinking about, you know, where any of our stadiums yeah. make an or excellent Or the obstacle abandoned course. industrial areas. Um, or around yep. UCF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Le- there's plenty of space. Really, there's plenty of space for this kind of thing. Everywhere there has been civilization long enough to have a strip mall that's died. Yeah. So, and that's uh, everywhere at this point. Let's see what else. Um, CRISPR Cas9. Yes. Editing our own genome. Just trimming them out. Making it as, as easy as pie. I um, don't need that RNA strand. Well, considering that they were trying to edit HIV out of people, yeah. Yep. Which may, in fact, be the way to finally cure it. Yeah. Uh, let me see. So that was... That's fun. Um, running out of disk space in the middle of the show. That's not a good thing. Uh, don't, don't do that. Yeah, we, that's that's kind of a bad thing. We'll see how this we goes. Had, well, Wells Fargo and Volkswagen oh. behaving badly. Oh, behaving very, yeah. very badly. <clears throat> very badly, indeed. Um, yeah. Now I have to... Go, go ahead and t- keep talking. I'm, I'm going to see if I can say, uh, save again, the show. Again, <laughs> as for Wells Fargo, you know, pressuring their employees to make certain quotas, so they were opening people new, brand new accounts and then immediately closing them so they could meet quota. Right. Um, and then, you know, as we have found out with with VW, they weren't the only ones that got their hands caught in the cookie jar, but they were the most, most high profile with their diesel vehicles having a testing mode so right. they could actually fulfill regulations. And then as soon as it was out of test mode, go back to polluting the world. Yeah, just immediately. Bastards. Yeah. Absolute bastards. <laughs> okay. But we've seen progress uh, towards uh, solar roadway usage. Um, and also the Gigafactory. Yes. Yep. Uh, solar roofing hopefully will be the wave of the future. Um, we are also seeing uh, in places throughout France uh, adopting greener and greener energies. We've had uh, Sweden pass laws where they're going to try and be completely carbon neutral. Same thing with Norway. Um, yeah. Those those who are going to still maintain being part of the EU, as long as there's an EU left, um, are trying to push to meet um, the the green accords that most of the Western civilization has signed on for. Hmm. Now let's just hope that the Paris Accords hold. Yeah, well, not not here. <laughs> The, we'll see. The thing is, there there is there's alternate pressure from other nations that is supposed to keep us involved in the Paris Accords. Even if we drop out of the Paris Accords themselves, we may still be involved in it, just not officially, because those mm-hmm. those third world nations that are skipping entire industrial steps, they're relying yeah. on money that was going to be invested in through the Paris Accords. And that that whole practice in order to jumpstart that for their their own countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we've already been hearing from places like Germany, Mm -hmm. France, that, oh, you're going to drop out of the Paris Accords. We're going to tax all of your goods with Mm -hmm. a carbon tax to make the playing field even. I'm entirely okay with that. 
that's the way it has to be. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, the NRA. The NRA was uh, was very big this year. Oh. They, they did some interesting things. They have an nrafamily.org site, and they uh, they reimagined Little Red Riding Hood, but with guns. Just want to remind Neat. remind everybody of that. I remember that. Oh, yeah. I think I'm the one who brought the story. Yeah. And then yeah, they had a follow up that, of that's Hansel and Gretel hurts. have guns. Yeah. Just This is literally nauseating. Yeah, yeah. It was nauseating then too. Um so nothing has changed there, but yeah, it's it is there. Um that that was a fun one. Uh that was on just show one oh programming. That was on show one oh two. I'm just kind of click what what happened in those show notes, what happened in those show notes. <laughs> And this is why we have show notes, folks. Yeah, One so of the reasons. You can go out there and you can find the show notes at areallyradio.com. Uh, and you can just scroll through all of the shows. Uh, you know, we, st- we started 2016 on show, one, uh, show 90. And we're yep. now on show yep. 138. So lots of good <sighs> content out there for you. Even if we do just kind of ramble on and on and on and on. Uh, but, you know, that's what you like. Uh, I mean, we... we have an entire new new segment with law and order mm-hmm. um which yep. again scotus blog keep yourselves informed because this affects you yeah especially with what's coming up and the fact that we are very likely not through retirement at this point but just to old age having its effects going to lose one to two more supreme court justices over the next four years more than likely yes yeah. the panama papers Oh, good heavens, yes. Mm. The Panama Papers. That was uh, Follow the Money. Follow the Money, uh, yep. Show mm. 104, Panama Papers. Significant fallout all across the globe. Uh, Iceland's uh, big scandal there. Uh, scandals tying into um, David Cameron's government and David Cameron himself with mm-hmm. his father. Again, I think that was more for... A little bit for us, but more of the wake-up call for everybody else going, yeah, this crap that we've been telling you forever about people hiding money offshore. Hi. <laughs> yeah. This is the sledgehammer to and the face about it. Now we're seeing Republican strategies to try and make us, here in the States, the offshore tax haven. And it'll work for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but another ramification of that is what happened in Ireland with Apple. Ah, uh, yes, yes, because they, they want their cut. They want their cut. Yeah. So the, what was it, the double Dutch Irish sandwich or something like that? You know, whatever that, whatever that uh, tax loophole burden was for offshoring uh, well, money? Well, again, Apple moved their headquarters, their, their, their multinational headquarters over to Ireland. Yeah. Um, and apparently they hadn't been paying taxes. Uh, well, and I the think EU they were goes, hey. A very small um, amount, yeah. You can't do that. So you're going to have to pay a penalty and all your back taxes. And if mm-hmm. Apple doesn't do it, we're going to get that money from Ireland. So you guys get a choice. Wow. So the EU itself, headquarters yeah. in Brussels, is really flexing some muscle. Oh, hardcore. Uh, and, and, and all Apple's year doing they've been everything doing that. they can to try and weasel out of it. Well, of course. And we're going to probably see a number of court cases coming this year. Yeah. Uh, that'll be tried. Uh, and Apple's going to have to pay a lot of money because I'm sorry, with the European courts, the corps almost always lose. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with this turn of events. It's interesting. Because, I mean, what a, what a weasel thing to do. Well, what will probably happen is... Well, they were there because uh, they could do it. Yeah. yeah. Apple you know, if they will, can't do it in anymore, response, move their headquarters to some other tax haven. And if what Trump is doing, or intends gonna, to do... He's going to reduce their tax rate. He, he is going to make it economically feasible for them to repatriate all the money that they have overseas. Yeah. And a lot of companies are going to be able to do that as well. Country. At the cost of those countries. At the cost of globalization. Not just those countries, but also us here. 
where you should be paying your proper tax rate, but yeah, but that's you not going to happen. You know, I, I I hate to say it, but at least that money would be coming back, whereas otherwise there was no intention for it to ever come back in the first place. By putting by putting in any rule that allows them to do it and still get something out of it, that's money moving that we're going to get a, a portion of. And with all the tax cuts that he's going to be making for the rich, our mon- our government has to get some money somehow. <laughs> Not necessarily. No. No, he's just going to lead us into the first American, or the great American bankruptcy, I'll call it. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great. It's going to be the best bankruptcy you've ever seen in your life. Well, it will be the biggest bankruptcy I've ever seen in my life. I'll, I'll well, go yeah. yeah. He, he, he's all about defaulting on loans and just saying we're not going to pay. That has <laughs> been his, yeah. his As most operandi. student of history... Do we really want to follow that path? Because that path has been well trod, and we did it to somebody else. That somebody else was Russia. I or, feel sorry, like this the is the Soviet Union. I feel like this is turnabout yeah. as fair play. That 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 is the end goal of what Russia. If if we're going to look at the strategy of their intelligence force, their intelligence uh, activities, the hacking of the DNC, pushing okay. Trump as president. Let's let's it, now. If we're going to go down here, that the, uh, we're going tinfoil here. Uh, well, you're not it, going it tinfoil. You're going into the actual stories that we were going to talk about. All so right. let's keep going over the year. Well, no, let's <clears throat> let's talk about that now. Let's go ahead and intermingle actual okay. current events because hey, guess what? We're still in 2016. So yeah. the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security released uh, their reports on the Russia hacking, you know, of the election. Yeah, they Oops. did. Um, and nobody's really doing or saying anything about it. Um, well, no, because remember, uh, we're saying plenty of stuff about it, but of course, the Obama we're part of the lying media. has done what they can. And as soon as they did something about it, <laughs> Congress, the House, passed a bill targeting midnight Obama regulations. Basically stripping a sitting president of anything that he does in the last 30 days of his presidency. Which is... This bullshit. is horrible. Yeah. That's actually... If that actually fully goes through... Um, that will be challenged in the Supreme Court and shot down because that is an overstep of the separation of powers. You would think, wouldn't you? You well, would think that, that would mean that it has somebody would challenged. have to. That yeah, it has to be challenged. To challenge. But as soon as this does, the Supreme Court will be like, oh, yeah, clearly done. Yeah. So this happened yesterday, for those that are listening live. The House on Thursday passed legislation that would allow Congress to overturn a single vote, in a single vote, any regulations multiple, finalized in the last days of the Obama administration. Despite Democratic opposition, the Midnight Rule Relief Act passed largely along party lines, shocking, by a 240 to 179 vote. The bill would amend the Congressional Review Act to allow Congress to overturn many rules all at once by way of a resolution vote. Uh, Representative Bob Goodlatte, Republican out of Virginia, urged his colleagues on the floor Thursday morning to pass the legislation and tell the American people that lawmakers heard them on Election Day loud and clear. Yeah. Um, however, this this is something that passed the House it is yet to hit the Senate is what I'm hearing. So Senate yeah. is a majority for the GOP currently, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yes. However, there again, the Senate being the slower moving house and having some guys who actually know law uh may go, <clears throat> uh guys, this is dumb. We're it, not it is dumb and this. it's for show. Uh, the, the, let the house be, be the <clears throat> uppity, you know. Rah, rah, let's go party lines, let's go insane! And the Senate yeah. going, you're a bunch of idiots. Bye, Mama Van, we'll see you next year. She's, she's out Happy of steam New year. and has to, has to log out. So thank you uh, very much for joining us, Mama Van. We'll see you again. Um, the administration has already threatened a veto of the bill. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's the funny thing. It's like, wait, that's not going to make it because if it does make it to the president... He's going to get rid of it so that he could do everything else. 
uh, this, it's it's ridiculous in just it, on the face of it. It's um, so a waste of time. By yeah, by House Republicans mm-hmm. to their rabid base. Yeah, that no, we're gonna put it to Obama. Yeah. Well, along those same lines, um, looking at the midnight regulations and the mm-hmm. history of them, uh, the W presidency uh, tried to pass a several thousand pages and dozens of new agency rules, which set the record, actually, before Obama took office. Yeah. So, in theory, what they're doing here is going to neuter every president. Yeah. After Obama as well, within yeah. their last last days. No, this again, that might actually as, be as, that might actually be okay. No, because but what they would know then is they would actually have to do these things earlier. But as but you say, this is an overreach uh, with the separation of powers. I agree. Which is which but is the same time. Constitution and no, if it if it'll probably get vetoed. Yeah. Oh, it if will. it even gets gets passed in the Senate. I honestly don't think it's going to get passed in the Senate. Um, or if they do it, then the Republicans there are going to do it in such a way mm-hmm. that he won't be able to veto it in time. But then right. they can't negate what he did because the, right. po- the, the bill will not have passed in time for them to undo his powers. It, Un- there's yeah, there's a check and balance on this already. Unless it's phrased in some retroactive way. And even then, you know. those laws usually get challenged. Yeah. I mean, really, it's up to the next president to undo you know, a previous president's doings by presidential decree, you know, executive yeah. order. So, it's already there. <clears throat> and the uh, executive office of the president said the bill is unnecessary because the Congressional Review Act already allows for Congress to disapprove rules on a case-by-case basis. Quote, In addition, the bill would expand the scope of the rules subject to the CRA, such that by the time a vote on the resolution occurs, some of the rules may have been in effect for over a year. By doing so, uh, H.R. 5982 would create tremendous regulatory uncertainty, potentially impose additional costs on businesses, and represent a step backwards in applying sound regulatory principles to protect public health, safety, and environment, and other critical aspects of society. And this is why I don't think it'll get passed in the Senate. No, probably not. It should. It should die there. It should, but it's not a guarantee that it will. Um, We're kind of living in bizarro world. This is is bizarro America. We the the Tea Party slash alt right takeover of the GOP basically means that they're operating on a different set of principles. logic circuits, principles, ethics, morals, and a lot of that revolves directly around the relief structure that um, essentially government is responsible for enforcing the will of God. Ugh. Though I do have a. Bit of a off-topic question here. No, it, it's um, not off-topic. This is a really radio. What are you thinking? <laughs> my, 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 my thinking is tangent alarm. Tea tangent pa- alarm. The the, the 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 Tea Party is a separate entity of the alt right, but it, in a way, it sort of gave birth the, to the alt right. The alt right was a strange or, bedfellow, I think, to the ultra conservative crowd. I don't think that they're necessarily the same. No, well, and 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 for the rest of this episode, I, I I like to go to what I said previously. Instead of calling them the alt right, I will refer to them as racists. No, call them um, Nazis or white supremacists. It's no, they no, are ra- just racists. Um, just I'll straight out Nazis. racists. I I I don't like to give them credence of being that organized. Um, oh, but they are. <laughs> well, you know, you know, oh, as as far as. If we call them racist, then we we immediately push the conversation to a hostile level. If we if we call them white supremacists, they would agree. 
Oh, and then and then we have a place that we can continue and, the conversation from. And, and really, it's probably more descriptive of their actual position. They, uh, the, my point towards they are quite organized, and point of fact is they rebranded themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They collectively, as a group, rebranded themselves to something other than Nazi racist. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they put the hammer down and said, no more tattoos. Let your hair gr- go, grow to normal levels. Go to college. Infiltrate the, the business sectors. You know, fit in. Blend. Yeah, they went from the... Yeah. There's your article on this. They went from the, you know, standard skinhead, mm-hmm. screaming white power, backwoods racist to very highly educated. The way they look, the way they talk is much more yeah. articulate. And that is dangerous in a very interesting way. But in my opinion, it's a repeat of what happened in the 1970s. How so? How so? Okay. I'm definitely not, not saying you're wrong. I just want to hear your take on it. Yeah, no, I want to hear uh, this out. Uh, one of the fun things about getting an education, especially in theater, is you learn some really weird stuff because in theater, theater's good for that. You have to get an education on everything. Yeah. Um, and in doing research on one particular play, had to do some research on a white supremacist group out of the Pacific Northwest, surprise, surprise, called The Order. Um, now, The Order was, well, domestic terrorists. Okay. Uh, white supremacist domestic terrorism. Uh, but they were highly organized, and they targeted getting people into the ranks that were highly respectable, educated. Mm-hmm. Smart white folk. Um, and also getting involved with people who were already in places of power within the government. Uh, mainly the Social Security office so they could start actually embezzling money from the government. Social Security checks. Huh. Um, doing it with people who were recently deceased. Uh, especially uh, babies. That was where they were getting buku bucks directly from the government. Um, and no, these folks have more of a criminal bent to them, mind you, Mm -hmm. but the, the being presentable to other white folk, being sympathetic, being educated, being organized, that, that is something that has already happened. This is again, why you have to study history and all of it because it's repeating itself. They, they tried being, you know, stand up and I David Duke ran back then guys. Yeah. <laughs> and he's run again. History is literally repeating itself. So so David Duke is is basically the poster child of of that that era. Of that era uh, of, of, of white being, supremacy, you know, the KKK, again, the the whole clan thing. The, yeah, well well they 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 took off the hoods and just tried to articulate their message in a palatable way yeah. to the rest of white America and get them organized as well as getting the minorities to be afraid. Don't go to the polls. Something might happen. Right. We're not saying violence. We're saying something might happen. Thinly veiled threats. Yeah. Again, and that's how they operated back in the 70s. Now, there were some more raw, raw, like, neo-Nazism. That, that was a thing. But having the articulate corporate white supremacist, they've already done that. It's just back in vogue. Yeah. You know... Um, I, it feels like they have a lot more money this time. Yeah, because the money's been concentrated more. <laughs> Deregulation does that. That's true. Yeah. And who do we have to thank for the start of that 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 ball? We have Reagan. Huh. Reagan started it well, the, the fall towards deregulation. Clinton didn't help it. We also have um with Reagan, we have a surge in the religious right. You know, the yes. focus on the family, the uh the Jerry Falwell uh, you know, the, as, as Goldwater put it, he yeah. sold the, the soul 
of of the party to those those religious nuts. I'm trying to get the quote precise. I think you're probably nearly dead on. Uh, so yeah, racism and hatred have really taken uh, taken everything up a notch this year, and that's kind of unfortunately with it. It all culminated in the actual voting for Trump. At least for us, you know, liberal people, you know, we we are uh, in the the echo chambers that we follow mm-hmm. because we all have ours. Uh, it just seems like everything outside of it is hatred of anything that is otherness. And that seems to be just a rally cry because it well, was so unpalatable and not socially acceptable to be those things, even though they were anyway, that when they finally had an out for it, that they could be it, that they could just let their hair down and just be themselves again, they ran with it. Well, mm. Part of the, the 2016 uh, analysis of that we've done on this show, mm. our year in review, yeah. is that one, it, it's it's searching the soul, soul of rural America, but when you actually search the soul of rural America, you find a lack of education. Yeah, You also find a, a severe lack of hope um, change is not necessarily a good thing. Mm-hmm. You take solace and faith because that's how daddy did, and that's how grandpappy did, and that's right. how great grandpappy did it. Now, now this uh, is not to say that the people in rural America, the flyover states that, you know, as they're often referred to as, that's not to say that brilliant people don't come from there and still hold those values. That's not to say that at all. Time. It's it's but, only to say that what we're doing is we have to paint on the same broad brush that economists do, that socioeconomic, you know, and demographics are built on. Entire this is demographics. an anthropological study. Yeah. And that's the terms so that we're talking in. We don't want you, if you happen to be from Kansas or Oklahoma and do hold like five degrees and happen to be a nuclear physicist, you know. You are an exception to the rule. You are an outlier in a great way. Good for you. We're not talking about you. <laughs> a, good, a good place to look at actually is places like Iowa, Ohio. Yeah. Um, those are, are places where, no, you have some towns that there's no escape. Yeah, there's a lot of that. And that, that's where a lot of, of his support lies. One, um, there has been eight years under a black president. And while they've seen some economic benefit, they have not seen the change that us as liberals were touting. Mm-hmm. However, the change that they were ever going to see was always going to be different than what the liberals were actually after. But still, the economic change, the the, the economic downturn yeah. that was handed to us by W and his ilk, right? Uh, that Obama inherited, again, the, the greatest indictment of the Obama presidency that I can give is twofold. One, the man likes his war. And he plays the game well. That's number one. He's not a peacenik. Number two is he was not holding to the ambitions he touted in both elections. He didn't hold to his guns at all. Captain I, Compromise was in in the driver's seat during those eight years. You know, I, yeah. I don't know that I'm I'm on board with you on on the warmonger aspect. Yeah, I'm not, he, not he's, so much. Oh, he fights war. He just fights war very much the way Clinton fought war. Bomb <laughs> the hell out of him. I think he's probably deferring to the generals in making many of those decisions. But but still. Because, it, because it's like, okay, you're on the ground. All right, general. 
what do you think is the best course of action here? Still. They, they're it's like, well, we've got these he, great bunker busters. Let's he, blow up he, the entire mountain. He, he touted trying to do more as a coalition before he got in office. And then as soon as he got in office, a lot of that trying to reach across to the Muslim world slowly started to dry up. You could see it in a timeline. But is that and his fault? I mean, that it's, it's, I, it's a valid question. I have question. to say, if you, hold, if you hold to your principles as trying to be somebody who spreads peace, hold to the damn principles. Otherwise, come out and declare that, oh, things have changed. Don't try and still hide behind mm. that same piece, Nick Veneer. Well, he's a compromiser. Yeah. He in had to make the military-industrial complex ways. happy. He had to drop enough bombs to keep them happy right. so he didn't get shot. He had to, He had to. in order to get anything to work, come on, John Boehner. Yeah, it, all I had to do was that, that and all the eyes rolled. You know, it's like, but how many times had he tried to go at least halfway or further into try and compromise territory? And then eventually he had to go his own way anyway. And then as soon as you do that, you do have to throw a lot of different, uh, different things out of the window. Your plans, well, yeah, your plans don't, don't work anymore because nobody's working with you. Yeah, you can talk about John Boehner. I remember the whole government sequestration thing and then coming yeah. out of that finally saying, yeah, I got 95% of what I wanted. Yeah. It's like, that's not compromise. That, no. That's holding the government you know, for ransom. And winning. And winning. Yeah. Um, and we talked about, you know, the, the level of compromise that a Democrat has to do versus what a Republican has to do, where a Republican can just stonewall completely and can throw a hissy fit and not face any repercussions. But where the Democrat and the liberal is already holding themselves to a higher level and then... At the same time, everyone else is holding them to that same high high level, so you can't even misspell potato and get get in office. Whereas otherwise, you can lie, cheat, steal, and do anything else. And be you can have president. multiple years of three hundred and sixty five page a day calendars of vocal gaffes. Yeah, and be elect reelected over and over and over again. Yeah. But it's also so, appealing to a different different bases. Yeah, it, we need to convince right. those bases that they're going to kill all of us. But, and wa- they're going to watch this country burn. But the people who actually get up and go to the polls aren't necessarily those who refer to themselves as liberal. Right. That's a big part of the problem. Yeah, getting people to the polls is a problem. And of course, uh, this year we also had a great deal of voter voter suppression. voter suppression. A lot of voter suppression came to, came to our awareness. And the degree of gerrymandering also came to the forefront. Yeah. But we were also already aware of that. Yeah. That was a pretty Some of us condition. who were, some of us who were clued in, but, we were, but the people that watch, say, um, uh, Infowars? No, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, John Just, Oliver's um, Last Week Tonight. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, he did a lot on gerrymandering, uh, you know, broken, broken window policing. You know, a lot of the things that we have talked about on the show, he has gone in depth with and done a uh, fantastic job because, well, let's face it, he has a bigger budget than we do. So... HBO money. H- he's got HBO money, and they say, just keep doing it. You're, you're doing a wonderful job. We'll just sign checks. Um, whereas we're, we're looking at a, at a wider swath of things that are going on, like uh, bathroom bills in North Carolina and anti-LGBT <laughs> issues yeah. that came up in, in big ways. In addition to things like the TPP, which we found out about really this year, what it was even as much as we could since it was so uh, veiled obfuscated yeah and the ttip 
Yes. And various others that we discovered uh, through digging a little deeper, following the story, following that next link, asking the question, wait, what's that about? Why did that happen? Oh, God, what is this? (laughs) Hey, what are those signs that those people in that other country are holding up in, in, in this picture? Um. Things like that, just asking more questions, and we learn more things. Uh, All that has happened this year. It's been a very eventful year. Yeah. A lot of people have have gone into deep depression because of the things that have happened this year. They're not wrong. (laughs) It has been very bad for, for a large swath of the population. I mean, a large swath... We're, we're talking single percentage points. Right. But still, that minority... No, I, I think you can get into double percentage points because... I mean, Transgenders? I, if you're trans... now, But with this current election, with the result, it's not just mm-hmm. if you're trans are you afraid. I mean, we're going... Yeah. There's fear throughout the queer community yeah. about having rights repealed um it's having throughout the ally community about what they're going to have to do to stand up and what's coming down the pipeline if yeah. you are any sort of racial minority there's there's fear there um if if you yeah. are well, well let, let's face it with, with our ages deport if all you the, are the child deport everybody. of immigrants yeah if what's going to happen to your parents or if you are an immigrant yourself, what's going to happen? Let alone if you're a refugee who actually got through our process and ended up here. Um, if you have family that lives overseas, if you have family that lives in Latin America or in, in, in Africa, in the Middle East, mm-hmm. if you have family there, what's going to happen to them? What's going to happen to you? No, th- this nation... That has, was built on immigrants. Yeah, built built on the progress and 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 culture of minorities. They're all afraid, and they should be, and that's terrible. Hmm. Uh, okay. So things that aren't terrible, but still odd. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's difficult. Um. You found a, dinosaur you found fossils. A dinosaur fossils were found with feathers in amber. Yes, uh, we which... saw a, a, a within the arts community mm-hmm. uh, an entire opera for for those who are suffering dementia. Yes, and it succeeded. Um, so much progress towards green energy. Good heavens, mm-hmm. we got a lot this year. Solar energy is now cheaper as of like this month. Yeah. Than fossil fuel. Yeah, it, fi- we, we've ha- it finally, we finally hit the threshold. We've had cities and nations that have actually run <clears throat> entirely on green energy this year. Yeah. Who have run an energy surplus on mm-hmm. green energy. And unfortunately, we did cross the CO2 threshold, the parts per million threshold. And, you, you know uh, how you fix all that with all the uh, giant solar panel farms? Powering. You declare a world war and you bomb the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's that's how that's going to go down, man. Oh, they're just going to bomb the solar panels? We're going to have an energy war. Huh. Shortly <laughs> followed by the drinkable water war. You and your conspiracy theories, I swear. Yeah. You this and, is why I'm here. You and your we tin, need to you get and your you tinfoil. not a tinfoil hat. We need to get you a tinfoil suit. Three just, piece. Yeah, no, yeah. I want I want a tinfoil tank, and I <laughs> will not rest until my demands are met. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now we need. Okay, internet. I oh need boy. you to get like a a pair of old style World War II tankers goggles and oh, yeah. foil foil those bad boys. And get it to, to us over at O'Reilly Radio. I'll wear it on the show. I'll have a helmet that says foiled again. 
Oh no! Love it. Oh, Love it. it hurts so good. I, I, oh. I, I sense another segment, Andy. Oh, I foiled sense again. Another segment. Just call it okay. foiled again. Well, okay. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, writing your, I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. He'll have the goggles. One of us actually has to make a freaking turban now. Well, do do you? Want I have to been wanting a tinfoil here? turban. I've been wanting one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Actual want to follow my logic there. here? He's the Go great, on. great, Eddie's what? great Swami Pastrami. So, so let's go off the premise. Well, not really a premise. We know Russia's really excited about Trump as president. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's the Rus- useful idiot. He's the useful the idiot. Yeah. Russia is a major oil exporter. That they is have everything to lose Con- from all is- of the development that we're doing on green energy. Yeah, they have the resource curse. Well, America is also a big, a big oil exporter as well. Right, but if we own the technology, we benefit from the financial gains of making it. We also remember Russia actually does suffer from the resource curse, though to a lesser degree than places like Venezuela do. Yeah, yeah, that's what so, they've got. So that's what they have. I get it. Yeah. But um, and though, to be fair, Russia has been recently diversifying their portfolios. Um, right, because they yeah. want to be master and commander of the energy. Well, it's it's not just oil though. That is the their their current ace in the hole. Right, uh, they've been pushing towards um, more medical technologies as of recent. Yeah. Well, they, um, again, they need a, that a problem work. a problem with being Russia is their latitude. Hmm. They don't get as much sunlight. Mm-hmm. So solar doesn't work as well for them. Fair. So there's less of a priority. Well, it's it's just not as effective. It's not cost it's effective. It's not as effective. For them. Plus, they don't not. own the patents. They don't have the manufacturing tech for it. They just Russia has ha- had a history, same as China, of stealing technology. However, where patents they may don't actually mean have a great benefit is geothermal. They do have geothermal. Yeah, but remember they but were planning on putting solar sense. mirrors in orbit to you know melt the permafrost. Yeah. Well, Let's if they do, do that. that, if they do that, then they're going to release more anthrax, which also happened this year as permafrost melt yeah. w- went on the melt. Ancient, ancient, well, ancient. Just, but that way they could just beam concentrated solar light straight down into a solar collector on the ground and be good. Or aliens. Task it to be a death ray. Either way. More Either likely death ray. Either it, wait, wasn't that in but, uh, that was in the James Bond? That was Golden. Uh, it was Golden. So yeah. All the solutions <laughs> that you're proposing is it involves the development of new technology. No, um, all that technology is is currently available. It's just whether or not you put it together and have the will to use it. They have to put it together and make it actually function and work for them. Whereas yeah. they've already got the oil wells. Yeah. Why not dry those out first? Again, it's the, it's the yeah. transitioning technologies. However, while disruption, while, disruptive technologies is what it comes up. To. While they have have the oil as the current ace in the hole, mm-hmm. it, it it behooves anybody to be able to diversify. When you look over here in the states at at uh, an oil baron like T Boone Pickens, and he is pushing for us to move towards wind, and has heavily invested in wind infrastructure here in the states. Um, you 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 learn to diversify so that when that that market changes or mm-hmm. or and markets always change, yeah, they're never stable. You're ready to take the hit or you're ready to lead the way. And one of the things that I I, I put the towards the Russian oligarchs is if nothing else, within these past four years they have been woken up to what is needed. If right. they want to, if they want to take the flag and try and take the lead, it's going to be in diversifying not just energy but also info technologies and the medical field. Also, as we've seen them doing more and more and investing more in space infrastructure, as has China. Mm-hmm. The, these are the things that are going to shape the globe for the next eight to twelve years. Mm-hmm. Well, if if you start with any technology change at this point, it's going to be more like a twenty to forty year 
art. Unless you steal the patents from somebody else. Or well, some, some, some handy friend in a country that has a lot of this technology already says, yeah, you can take a look at all our patents. It'll be great. Well, things like... Uh Let's let's take a look at uh, at our our favorite Tony Stark Iron Man would be Elon Musk, and mm-hmm. how he took the the supercharger patents for the for the Tesla Roadster, and he open sourced them. He made that freely available so that other people could do it. Mm-hmm. So it's not like this technology is not accessible. You know, it, a lot Parts of it of is it. still emerging. Well, also again, and really, it's it's feasibility, yeah, combined with innovation. Solar collectors are not really the problem. The problem is battery storage. Containing but, that power during when the sun is not shining—that's the problem with solar. Well, and we've it seen has continued to development be a within the UK of. Yeah. Um, Infrared panels yeah. being developed. Um, we've also seen breakthroughs in graphene-based batteries, mm-hmm. as, as well as graphene capacitors. Yeah. So that's going to be a thing. That is where our, our tech is moving. We know that. Yeah. We can see yeah. that. They um, can see that. There was also, uh, um, let's see, there there was a. And I, I just now put it together, you know, when you're thinking about applications of technology and things like that. There was a, a graphene panel that was in development uh, that they determined that just a single drop of water, I believe it was a slightly salty water so that it had to charge, yeah. if it just rolled down the sheet across different different strata, it created a charge. Just hmm. that just that much. So imagine... And rain happens. Well, rain happens, but Rivers rain happen. rain is technically <laughs> more pure than than that. But imagine if you took, say, a warship, and you just painted that on the side. Ooh. So as long as it's moving, it's it's generating charge. It's generating just a passive current. Yeah. So I mean, so, there's there's a lot of ways that these things can be applied, and you know I'm. I'm just a podcaster at this point and a, and a, yeah. a, a technophile. I, lo- I love this stuff. So I well, think about it. And just think about people in Russia, they think about it as a, I have to do this because necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, but, but think about how we're, we now are seeing um, wave power coming into play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely at, become a more practical thing. It's been around for decades, but yeah. But. Take take some of those wave generators. Yeah. The the things that are getting our, our power off the wave. And then painting them in that graphene. Yeah. Because the wave movement there is constant, so you're getting double the energy. Yeah, yeah. and then you strap a solar panel on top of it. Yeah, which is which is then attached to the to the uh the the windmill also. <laughs> I mean why yeah. not? Yeah. Get, get it all. Get it all in one place. You know, sure. Like, why aren't there tidal generators on on some of the uh, the the windmill platforms that are out in the in the Atlantic? Yeah, it's starting yeah. there. You've got the infrastructure built. Yeah, yeah already. Might might as as well. You've got currents running around it. You're already siphoning power. You've already got all the investment there. You know, there's ways that these can be enhanced. Yeah. You know, th- there's there's avenue here for for this kind of thing. So, there is lots and lots of power available. There's lots of technologies for it's it. It's just whether or not you have the will to get it, to seize it. And the infrastructure. And there is there is the, you have to overcome. It's all about overcoming that, well, that I, into the next step. You know, have would I Morocco like to put going, solar power on hey, my house? I'd love to put solar power on solar my house. Power. But... In order to put solar power on my house, I have a huge outlay of, of, of money that I have to put down. Yes. And, you know, even if I, 
Th- and that's just to get the components. And then I have to have specialists come in and install it properly. And then, you know, then there's a maintenance that then I have to worry about as well. Whereas right now, the easiest thing ever is just to cut a check to FPL or Progress Energy or whoever your power provider happens to be. And they maintain all the equipment. They maintain it all. And all you do is just pay for the kilowatt hour. Of course, that absorbs all the, all the maintenance in, in that too. But it's, it's convincing somebody to change their own oil. Mm. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of that. Can you do it? Sure. But you have to make it so easy for people to do. So easy. So we're going we're gonna to keep seeing more and more of that and more innovations and, and how that's going to work out. Because the Tesla Powerwall, for instance, that was mm-hmm. another thing that came out this year that is working in coordination with the Solar City acquisition that, you know, the merger of those two different, um, different avenues that, uh, that Musk and, and company were working with. You know, they're working on making it a, a more inclusive package from having the solar tiles on the roof to having the, the power oh. wall technology to store energy when it's not being used. You know, all that. And using that stored energy to charge your electric your vehicle. vehicle. Right. You know, they, they're really well, working on, on a holistic approach to, to get the whole thing. And that's really the proper way to do it. But it takes a visionary to do it that way to create the ecosystem that these things can can live and thrive in. Now I have a question. Yeah. With all this innovative technology and the the the, the current globalized climate, shouldn't we see a return of the world's fair? That would cost money. I I see I see a reduction in conferences in general. I mean, Again, there are I conferences, funniest... there's, there's auto shows, uh, there used to be more than one, well, I guess there's like two or three now, uh, but there used to be a lot more than that, uh, just electronic shows, the new mm-hmm. technology yeah. that was coming out. You know, a lot of that has just gone away, because the but internet's the... just providing it daily for people. You but can go I out to Gizmodo an or, an actual well, used to go World's Fair where you can get your, your hands on the stuff. Yeah, but that was pre-internet. That could be monetized. It's pre-internet, though. Yeah, it's pre-internet. But seeing how much you know BlizzCon makes, PAX and 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 PAX yeah. makes, there's money to be made here, man. The return of the World's Fair, is something that is iconic for all of them. some older folks, their history yeah. buffs and, and younger history buffs, and then going high on the world's stage, you get to you know. And you can make it competitive again, sort of like the Olympics, but with less of an infrastructure, you know, chokehold. It'd be neat to see, again, the groups coming out and companies coming out and showing, doing that whole, you know, presenting the best of the best, showing the stuff with the bleeding edge of what's, you know, quote unquote, right around the corner. And um, being able to see those presentations. Okay, just Holmes the hold future. on. Stop. Stop. They're still going on. Just not here in the United States. Um, That's the problem. In really in 2015, there was one in Milan, Italy. In 2016, there was one in Italia, Turkey. In 2017, there will be one in Kazakhstan. Huh? Yeah, one being in, in Kazakhstan doesn't surprise me. And in 2020, That's there's going to be one in Dubai. Advanced culture. So they are still happening uh there's it one just not getting the publicity of there's a bid well no they're they're not here in the united states so we don't care you know the united states zeitgeist which controls the media for most of the world it, it really does so if we're, we, we're not covering yeah. it therefore it didn't happen um in 2020, 20, 2022 and 2023, there are bids for uh, Minnesota's bidding. Oh. And in 2025, Houston's bidding, as well as San that Francisco and New York State. Hmm. So they are still happening. Much to our chagrin. We just didn't know about it because 
When was the last one in the United States? Uh, thanks to Wikipedia. It was canceled in 1992. It was supposed to be in Chicago. And it was canceled. Huh. Hmm. But of course. Before that, um, it was the 1984 World's Fair. Uh, it was the 1984 Louisiana World Exposition in New Orleans. Fresh water as a source of life was the theme. In 85, it went to Japan. And then 86, it was in Vancouver. In 88, it went to Australia. And then it skipped to 1991 and was in Bulgaria. So, yes, they still happen, but not very often in some cases. And it is a world fair. So they don't happen here in the United States. Fair. All the time. Almost world fair. <laughs> well, no, they happen in the United States, just not as often. Like in the 1900s, there was a lot of them that happened in the United States. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like every every couple years. Like every that two, two three years. For it. Yeah, in 19... 19- and we compete to have it. In 1913, there was one in Knoxville. In 1914, there was one in Baltimore. In 1950, one in San Francisco. So it was like every year there was one in the United States. But that was in the early days. Now it's, oh, look, the last one we had was supposed to be in Chicago, and it got canceled. (sighs) What a waste. So it's still possible. It's just that's not something that's, that's there. So, again, this is just one of the things that we do. We, we dig in. We dig in, folks. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still kind of miffed about Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> they, you know, they missed an incredible opportunity to get people interested in science that otherwise wouldn't care. That would have been, it would have been great. Because that ship would have made headlines everywhere it went. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would have. You are right. Are you, the, what would it have been, the HMS? It was British, right? Yeah, Her yes, Majesty's Her Service. Majesty's. HMS Bodie McBoatface. Mm-hmm. People would have. They named a ship Bodie McBoatface. I'm going to go check it out. Oh, and incidentally, get exposed to science. <gasps> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would have been the RSS. RSS, okay. right, your yeah, Royal Research Ship. Well, I'm yeah. pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, Royal, Royal Service. Ship. Ship. It was a research vessel. Yeah. So RSS Bodie McBoatface. Yeah. Would have been awesome. It would have been fantastic. Now that was uh, that was also on that was show uh, one oh eight, and that also had uh, the unveiling of the Tesla Model X bioweapon defense mode, which was yes. freaking cool. That was pretty notable. <laughs> pretty notable. <laughs> um, really makes me want to get a Tesla more and more every day, especially since uh, something that we weren't necessarily going to talk about, but it did happen. There was a a video of a crash in the Netherlands from a mm-hmm. dash cam on a Tesla. And the Tesla was using an algorithm to analyze the traffic ahead of it. Oh, yeah. And the algorithm detected that there was an abnormality and raised heightened awareness to it. And then w- it caught the accident as it happened and engaged the flashers of the car and emergency braking. Before the own, before the driver of the car even knew what was happening. Yeah, I, I've never seen that because it has a warning tone. That tone mm-hmm. occurs about a second, second and a half before the crash actually occurs. As you realize the car going, something's about to happen. Yeah. So the car knew what was happening before the driver. Outside of the vehicle, the car knew what was happening outside of it. Before it was scanning because it had clear air in front of it. There was a vehicle in front of it which was driving a lot faster than it should have. It wasn't scanning just that. It was scanning the vehicle that was in front of that one, in the opposite lane, in the in no, the same lane. In the, no, it was it was a it was a two two lane road. So it was the no, lane. It was, it was the, the car lane. up here that no, was crossed the over. It, the vehicle was in the same lane, and he went to cross over to get around it, and oh, okay. instead clipped the rear bumper. Oh, okay, okay. See, I was just watching the car. I didn't know. <laughs> no, it was just still was impressive. Going, it was reading like that far ahead to go high. And scanners have that yeah. good of a resolution. Which is impressive. Yeah, that's yeah. That's like the the Batmobile, Christopher Nolan's Batmobile, where he's got the radar of all the cars on the road ahead of him, and he's just skirting through. Yeah, it's good stuff. 
It's good stuff. Uh, yeah. So saving up for a Tesla, sure. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I, I wish. Win the lottery. I wish. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. All of us. Um, let's see what. There were so many things that happened this year. It's a lot of epic rap battles. Some of them yeah. good. Some of them good. Some, some of them yeah. bad. The most recent one was actually not half bad. Not half bad. It no, was. Was it even Teddy half Roosevelt good? It was versus... Teddy Roosevelt versus Winston Churchill. Oh jeez. Okay. It was actually in comparison to the last few they've done, actually pretty good. Mm. I wasn't even paying attention to most of them, to be honest. Um, let's see. <clears throat> we did stop doing logical fallacies on the show, but that's because we changed the format. Um, and we kind of ran out of logical fallacies. Let's be honest here. Oh no, no, no. There were there were still more. They just weren't uh, weren't as easy to to really pick out. Um, also, I'm, I'm going through and I'm trying to figure out when Dan started growing his beard. Because I know that in um, in May, you were clean shaven. So I'm, I'm still looking. <laughs> still looking to see when you started growing that beard. Um, let's see. Science. Um... Oh, yeah. Uh, discovered that Tylenol uh, doesn't just affect pain, but it also affects empathy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So possibly most painkillers do the same thing. There's, there's I just don't possible. care. Yeah. yeah, you just don't care about other things or other people or how it's affecting anything. So also known as me every day of my life. Hmm. Yeah. Well, for the for those that are already in chronic pain, that are trying to combat that. Yeah, you're already a little bit touchy. You're already not really caring about other people nearly as much as, oh my god, I hurt. And then you take something else, and then you really don't care about them. <laughs> so, just, you know, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, let's see. There was some swarm intelligence used to predict a horse race. That was interesting. Um, oh, yes. The NASA patent vault was opened. Yes. Mm-hmm. That that's pretty big news. That's pretty big news. So, all the interesting patents that NASA has uh, has acquired and and developed over the years has been opened up, and uh, you can just go and, and peruse and do what you will as part of the uh, Open Science Project. Uh, actually, I'm sure it's called something else, but that's that's what it is. Um, <laughs> man, the, I I see like in every show there is something about hate and anti-LGBT, it's every week. There is something yeah. about it. Uh, Indiana showed up many times uh, with not just anti-LGBT, but also uh, the anti-abortion, anti-Planned Parenthood, having to have uh, burials for fetuses. Uh, you just... Absurd things. and Mike Pence, everybody, our soon-to-be vice president. Yeah, that's soon-to-be acting president, assumed president. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, the, the bathroom bill that in North Carolina. And North Carolina just becoming a place that is abhorrent to visit. Yeah. When you actually have travel advisories from Britain going, hey, don't visit these places in the Americas. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. You know the formal colonies? Don't go there. For your safety, don't go there. Yeah. Not not so good. Not so good. Um, We did have, uh, we had some comic book authors on the show. And they even yes. they they made some art for us, which was fantastic. Um, in fact, let me see if I can. Uh, I'll pull that in, just so that people can be reminded on the show real quick of uh, of what kind of wonderful art uh, we did end up getting. There we go. A skeleton hmm. named Steve and his pet dinosaur. Yes. Oh no! I'm sorry. Uh, Steve is the dinosaur. Adam is the skeleton. Yeah, Yeah, Adam and Steve. Adam and Steve. Uh, Oh, nice. Yeah, it was. It's fantastic. So they even 
gave us a little owl and everything. It was so, it was wonderful. So awesome. Um, definitely need to have them back. And that was uh, Todd Davis and Caitlin Gutler. Uh, we, we definitely need to have them back at some point. Um, that was a good, good fun time. We've had uh, other, other guests on from uh, Tucker Drake on. I had uh, Bill Hunsaker, and I had the folks from No Religion Required. I had them on a couple times. So it, we've, we've been having some, some fun guests here and there. And we uh, just recently had, um, oh, what was her name? Marissa McCool. Yes. Yeah, Riss. Uh, we had her on. So we we can definitely do more uh, more interviews and things like that next year. That would be fantastic. So, and you know, uh, I think we're I think we're kind of running dry here on on things that I'm even willing to talk about. Uh, yeah, when it comes to it, there's there was a lot of bad this year, and we were forced to focus on it because you need yeah. to be informed. And now, now the bad has a uh, a minority mandate. Yeah, such a mandate. S- some some of them, yeah, some of it. But hopefully, hopefully, cooler heads and wisdom will prevail. However, that is going to take a great deal of vigilance and a lot of contacting your representatives and letting them know how you feel. That, that that that's the key thing. This, unfortunately, you should not allow your this, cooler head to prevail. This when is you no longer oh, no. representative. Well, no, not that. But it's the idea. This is no longer the idea of the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, where that was literally the proper thing to do. You know, okay, mm-hmm. we're at this point. Let's let cooler see if cooler heads prevail, or if, or if things are going to go, you know, completely freaking sideways. In this case, no. As I said, after the election came down, after the results came down, is the idea, no, get pissed. Stay pissed and contact your representatives. They literally have lines for you to do that. You hire them by your vote. You are allowed to contact them. My God, please do. That will keep you engaged. And that might actually get a change occurring because, oh, wait, they list their constituents. And phone calls are more effective than emails or written letters. Truth. Yeah. Call, call, call. Yeah. You can make it a weekly thing. <laughs> call early. Hey, call often. Mm-hmm. If you want to, you can set this up. If you somehow... You can make it a, a, a Friday ritual. On your lunch break, call one of your representatives, and then later on in the evening, tune in to O'Reilly. Hey, there in you fact, go. In fact, why not you, you give us a, an, an email or a text about who you contacted that Ooh, week. Ooh, I love that. That's a great call to and action, And on what issue? Again, take a look. See mm-hmm. what bills are coming by that you really don't want or you do want. We can discuss Contact the bills about on, that. The sh- on the show, or we can discuss what it is that you brought up to your representative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, if, if you're fed up with the government and the way <laughs> things are at the, the, most, the most visible forms of government, you know, our president, um, our Congress... All of that. They, they are not the ones that actually impact your life the most. Your local elections are more important to you, personally. State representatives. Even go- county. Governatorial races. Your, your county, county, county commissioners. commissioners. Yeah. Your mayor. All of them. These are very important races to you personally. And if you get involved with that, then you'll see how things do trickle up. Mm-hmm. And there's an awful lot that happens in your state Congress, in your state legislature. Oh, good heavens, yes. It happens fast. It doesn't get a lot of press. And it and, trickles up fast. And it trickles up. Things that happen at the state level do make it eventually to the national level. Um, again, how many of our presidents were were former governors? Right. Not just reality stars, no, but also but, governors. Yeah. 
How, how many vice presidents and presidents? Yeah, uh, a lot of them. A lot of them. That's kind of the the stomping ground. That's where you have to go first in order to, you know, you prove you can run a state, and then you prove that, you know, somehow that, that proves that you can run all of them, um, unless you're Donald Trump. But he's such an outlier. Then, he's so yeah, much he's an outlier. A, I he's a total outlier. Um, there's a path where he could get reelected, and it's an easy path to follow, but it really yeah. he's such a loose cannon it's hard to predict and whether or not he's actually going to follow that path it's also hard to predict whether or not he's just going to be impeached you know i mean anything could happen anything could happen so stay tuned to a really radio and you'll find out more because well we're going to keep looking because we have to can't stop won't can't, stop can't stop can't stop. No, this is, it's too important. It's too important. Um, also, the, uh, you know, just to leave on kind of a, a positive note, though that is a great stopping point, so perhaps we should, but um, we don't have the only space program in the world. You know, obviously oh. the Russians have, have one. We're, you know, hitching a ride with them all the time. Uh, China's been working very hard, but so has India. And, mm -hmm. you know, a while ago, they unveiled a small reusable craft that costs only $14 million to make. So keep looking out for, for things of that nature. It's, it's going to mean something because the same day that that story hit was also the same day that SpaceX stuck one of their, their landings for their reusable craft. It is a great time to be alive in the effort to get off this rock. Yeah, and we have got to get off this rock. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of imperative. At this it's point. critically important. And, and you know, Hawking even if says that 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 is a vital component for for yeah. the future of the species, yeah. you should believe it. Even if we're not leaving the rock completely, you know, is if we're not leaving the gravity well. We still have to have the ability to have an an off planet habitat of some type. We need to be a spacefaring race. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, artificial gravity. I think that's really what we need to need to build. That's that might be next. Get get some real artificial gravity, not just spin. We need artificial gravity. <laughs> need to master that. Spin spin's a good substitute for the time being, and it's really cheap to implement on a ship. You just make it, it long. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. Um, wow, I'm I'm just still just churning through the year here. I'm I'm at uh, show 112, and mm. there's um man, there's just so much, so much. Something about the TSA being so bad that Delta had to. Install their own security. Yeah. 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 Weird. Didn't see that coming. No. Oh, um, now this this was interesting. Uh, Trump announced that he was rebranding the GOP as the Workers Party. Remember that? When was that? That was. Uh, when was this exactly? It was June first. He didn't make it. Yeah, that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. Uh, I wonder what else he's promising that is not <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Um, I believe we survived another end of the world. Um, yeah. Several. Not much hubbub about that one. Yep. I mean, come on. 2012 was the big one. Oh, it was a big one, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be yet another big one. Um Oh, uh, a dead brain brought back to life thanks to new biotech experiments. Uh, there was that gunshot plug. Yeah. Yeah, that big injector to staunch, staunch uh, gunshots. Yep. The sp Little sponges. micro sponges. This will make you wish you never got shot. Uh, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt yeah. a lot. But you'll live. But you won't bleed out. Yeah, you'll live through it. So Just in that. case you thought that was the 10 for your pain scale. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting shot. <laughs> no, no. Now we're going to shove this in the wound 
<laughs> and then and then force, force some sponges in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little gruesome, but it'll keep you alive. What do you mean? A <laughs> Eternal little gruesome? internal scream. <laughs> That's what happens there. <laughs> well, you know, I'm. At some point, the shock really kind of just takes over, and and then it's you know I'm not God, even sure you something happens. So. <laughs> At some point, it happens. That might be the point that it happens. In there are some people who actually do not suffer from shock, and I feel very bad for those people in certain situations. Uh, and now I'm just thinking we need a little cartoon uh, character named Little Gruesome. Little Gruesome. Well, yes. it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there was a lot of research into conspiracy bias. Yeah. Uh, I don't suffer from that. <laughs> no, really? It's not bias if it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Foiled again. Um, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Um, uh, the American breakfast, the American idea of breakfast was a uh, a big corporate lie. Yes. You know, that was... That was on Weird. show uh, one thirteen. If you look uh, at the world, they have breakfast a lot different than we do. Scientists played a lot with bacteria this year. Uh, somebody turned a bacteria into a living hard drive, and then they were able to get data back out of it. It took forever, but they were actually able to store data in bacteria and then get that data back out. But well, they should have used younger bacteria. Oh, jeez. That's just wrong. It's always younger with you guys. No, no, it was it was a generational thing. They let the generations pass, and then they were still able to to get it back out of the refreshed DNA from from the bacteria. Crazy, yeah. <clears throat> um, and then of course Zika. Yeah, Zika, Zika, Zika. <sighs> mm-hmm. So many things. Okay, so. I think we could probably move on, or you know what? We could just call it a, call it quits, and we could just see you guys next year. What do you think? What do you think? Hmm. I say we do the picks. You want to do picks? Go straight to picks. Let's do picks. Yeah. Let's go Let's straight picks. to picks. We'll just have one show this today because uh, why not? Because it's uh, <laughs> let's say goodbye to 2016 in style. Let's bye. I don't have enough alcohol for that. Right. Well, I. Just there needs to be more explosions. I drank that much wine. Positive kind. <laughs> Which was oh, good. oh. <laughs> that, that, no, no. We've we've all lived through 2016. That's nowhere near enough. Yeah. Wrong glass, sir. No, no. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I like him just that way. Uh, let's see. So, picks. You know, I haven't really done any picks recently because we just haven't got there in so long. It's um, been bleak. Any updates on picks you've had in the past? Updates on picks. Your uh, um, Flex server keep updating. <laughs> well, I did. I did get the Synology uh, uh, disk oh, station. You got a disk station. I got a disk station, a big 12, 12 uh, drive set, and it is working admirably. Um, I can get some some very good data throughput to it. Uh, it. It took a while to stabilize itself, and I have a lot of data on it. It does, it does have an enormous capability range, and uh, it is more expandable than they tell you. Oh, uh, because they they only say that it can support up to six gigabytes of RAM. It comes with two. I put in sixteen. And it works. Nice. So, scratch my head on that one. It's like, why don't you just let them put it all in? But uh, really, it 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 hardly That's what ever. She said, "Yeah, it hardly ever touches touches that that amount of RAM." Uh, <laughs> it's got uh, it's got Plex on it and uh, and various other things. <laughs> it's not super strong, uh, but for a a lightweight household or small business server. It is ideal. It can run Active Directory. It can run as a mail server, an FTP server. Uh, it's got it all, and it's all built in. So there's not a whole lot that you'd have to do. So if you happen to have a whole mess of hard drives, 
<laughs> um, of, of various sizes as well. You can do multiple sizes with it, and it, it will do a uh, what is called a Synology hybrid raid. So it will use the, use the drives and build an array based on those drive sizes that will then still support um, redundancy. And then you can swap a drive out, which I've done. I have actually gone through the process. I took a two two terabyte drive out and put in a six terabyte and let it rebuild. And nice. suddenly I had more space. So it works. It works very well for, for things like that. Um, so if you happen to be a small business person and want some some place to have all your stuff in a nice secure space then you sh- you should probably really investigate a synology uh device the big ones like eight like eight drives or more i would say cuz i have i have a 12 drive and i can get an expansion unit for an additional 12 drives oh wow that, that it will run and you can also do branch offices with it so you could then have another synology of the same type or even a different type uh, but with similar similar volume sizes. And you can also break those drives up into different volume sizes. So you could have, you know, different complete volumes. And, and uh, like, if you want four of those drives to be one RAID, you can do that. And then the other drives you can have as a, as a completely separate RAID and they never touch. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility there. But you can also have another one in another office, off-site, in a completely other building, and they will synchronize to each other. And you can use the console to manage both of them at the same time. Wow. So they're nice. they're very flexible and really kind of cost-effective for that. So for the price of, of a pretty decent rig, we're talking like $1,300. Okay. You have a back office server. Just populate it with drives, and you can do anything you want. You know, and if, you, if you've got like an office of uh, 10 people... You're, you're golden. You're golden. You, you can run a mail server on it and do anything you need to. You realize in the future, once I start my business, Andy, I'm contacting you to build this for me, right? Well, Cowan Services is here to support all of your business needs. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, <laughs> Andy at CowanServices.com. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, if, if just following up on that, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a good box. Uh, I've been pleased with it. Uh, since I am running an enormous Plex server with lots and lots of media, uh, enormous. It uh, it doesn't have the guts to give me as many streams as I need. So I'm just using it as a file server and accessing you know shared drive letters uh, with all that media on another box that can actually do all the all the main throttling and you know transcoding and things like that. But it's it works out nicely. It's just a a, a different system. They also, uh, I think they just came out with one that is uh, IO Gear has a fireproof version. So it's it's a five disc setup built into a fireproof safe. Ooh, ooh. with all the all the bells and whistles as well. So if you happen to, you know be really concerned about that kind of thing and you want to pay the price to have that much yeah you can you can definitely get uh, get that kind of setup or you could just for less than the price of one of those you could get two of the other ones and drives and just have them in t- in multiple locations <laughs> yeah have, <laughs> that, that, have one that's off site yeah that kind of be my my best uh, bet on that, and they Actually, do have a question uh, I have for you about the Synology. Could you throw uh, SSDs in there? Yes. In fact, you can put uh, in this model. You can put four SSDs in, and it will then uh, through its through some algorithm that is unbeknownst to me, they will then use those for higher access data. So then your throughput oh. goes up. A lot. Um, and as is, it has four gigabit Ethernet ports on it. So I, I'm saturating my, my network cards in individual computers. You can saturate four computers and still not reach the full throttling capability. It's, it's kind of crazy. Hmm. 
it's good. It's a good box. Um, yeah, r- routinely just from from the SSD I have on on my computer that I'm running all of this on to that computer uh, to that server. If I'm just copying, moving a file, uh, it's hitting 113 megabytes a second, sustained all the way through, and that's with it doing other things. So it's it's quite good. It's quite good, and that's that's hitting the. Yeah, that's hitting the limit of the gigabit switches that I have around. That's that's my throttle point. So that's it's yeah, it's a good box, good box. So I'll I'll put a link to that uh, that in the show notes. Uh, and you know if you have any questions, Andy at CowanServices dot com. There you go. All right. So Stephen, you've got hmm. one. Everything you wanted to know about languages. This was uh, this was yours from uh, from last week, which you didn't get to, which we did not get to. We just uh, breezed breezed by it. Um, We'll probably just let some of these stories die. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you know what? I'll leave them in the show notes, and we'll just say that these these were the things that we didn't get to. <clears throat> so what is this? Everything you want to know about languages. Tell us about this. This is a guy who is essentially a language nerd. He has his own channel on YouTube. It's a uh, native language. N-A-T-I-V-L-A-N-G is the name of the channel. Mm-hmm. But he goes through languages across the globe goes into detail about them in ways that are actually fairly easy to understand for someone who's not as in-depth as he is. Talks about, you know, basically, you know, how writing kind of started, how it broke apart into different sections, what it is like in different cultures. He goes into the language he absolutely hates, which happens to be Tibetan, um, because it's one of the hardest languages to spell in. That's Um, an interesting concept. I didn't think about that. The, uh, you know, how things go from being pictograms to letters, you know, the, you know, Chinese and Japanese writing language system, how Latin actually sounds like, you know, how isolation affects languages. He's a, like, essentially, it's a Wikipedia article on language writ, talked about with a guy who is an absolute, utter language nerd. Oh. And it's a fascinating, fascinating breakdown of you know, just in general languages, <clears throat> how they've been, how they are. And he genuinely knows a lot of them. I mean, he's a true polyglot. That's a great word, polyglot. So, so what have, what have you learned uh, that, that really wa- makes you want to share it? What's, what's a big uh, I, high point? I find it fascinating. The really cool thing he goes about is going into like the very beginning of writing and how, letters became the way they are, how, like, you know, initially it was, you know, here's this picture, an actual pictogram depicting this thing, and how that picture kind of over time shifted, because you can see how language has changed with, you know, you know, how it changed, like, you know, it might be a giraffe, but then the giraffe has kind of its head moved, and it makes, it looks a little more abstract, in, but that still means the same thing. And how that keeps changing over time and as languages themselves shift. And, you know, going back to like looking at like the proto languages. Hmm. And it's, it's completely fascinating him going in, in detailed in all this. Yeah. And the, the, if writing didn't exist, that was an interesting one. But the birth of writing, you know, and the history of writing systems going through that whole thing is just absolutely like, Amazing, huh? And, and he actually tell he actually goes through and for a lot of languages that are of uh, ones he's specifically covering. You know, he'll actually start like you know talking in it. You know, as he's showing things on screen, so you know then what that sounds like. Oh, <clears throat> very interesting. And these are uh, well, all except for the uh, the number thirteen here. Uh, most of them are under five minutes, but this last one, uh, Thor's. Thoth's Pill, an animated history of writing. That's uh, that's a good forty-seven minutes right there. So that's uh, mm-hmm. that's a big deal right there. But uh, just thirteen on this, ch- yeah, thirteen videos on the channel right now. Last updated November sixth last year, so twenty fifteen. So it looks like uh, he might be done for now. But definitely a good that's resource. So amazing, good resource. You know him. He might be traveling to some of these countries and learning stuff. Probably, probably. That's that's usually what happens with uh, 
true researchers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see. I need to get. Why am I? No. Hey, there we go. Okay, back to the notes. <laughs> I also, I also have a second thing which I figure I found out just a couple days ago, which is just absolutely hilarious. Ah, uh, yes. Of IO9. If the, if you ever, I've seen these a few times. Other things like you know, this thing which is a common occurrence inside of a movie, and every time it occurs, they speed up the video. Well. They did this with Star Wars, the original, so as also as a New Hope, where every time a weapon is fired, the entire movie speeds up. As yeah, just, such, just the, the laser, yeah. Lasts, yeah. It, it, uh, it takes a grand total of 1 minute and 13 seconds to actually go through the entire movie. Um, yeah. So actually, there, there's some good... There's some good sections where there, there's nothing actually happened. No, no lasers firing. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good. 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 Okay. All right. You know, we get the front of the front end of the movie here, and it just gets faster, 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 faster. faster. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Very fast. <laughs> very fast. Very very fast. Oh, the maintaining thing. speed. Very fast. Very fast. Very fast. <laughs> very fast. Super fast. Even faster. Faster. You can hear the, and, and Death Star boom, and credits. <laughs> Congratulations, you have now watched Star Wars: A New Hope. Yeah, somehow, wow. if you can, in about ninety seconds. Yeah, it's quick. It's quick. So that was definitely important with uh, you know Carrie Fisher's death. You know, it's nice to get back into Star Wars. But, you know, it's always good to get back into Star Wars is really what it comes down to. So. All right. Daniel, drive through RPG. I am a big yes. fan of drive through RPG because, you know, you kind of have to be in this day and age. <laughs> in this day and age, yes. Uh, and especially with, uh, I know, a lot of folks that live in more rural counties and whatnot where... They don't have a local game shop. So you're either going through places like Paizo where you're, you're buying direct from them and getting it shipped, or you can go through drive through RPG, which is the largest RPG download store online. Mm -hmm. Um, they have, uh, a lot of exclusive rights with, with certain publishers like, uh, catalyst, which handles your shadow run, your battle tech, uh, their own Valiant universe, uh, as well as um, stuff for Onyx Path, uh, which was formerly White Wolf. Now White Wolf is White Wolf again. But Onyx Path is their own separate thing that are doing publishing for um, Exalted 3.0 uh, and a lot of the uh, was now been rebranded as the Chronicles of Darkness. That's New World of Darkness for for most of us. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, that's that's Onyx Path, and they're publishing through there. Um, but you also have wonderful third party publishers like Mongoose, Green Ronin, um, uh, Pinnacle Entertainment. All those publishers are there. They they have a wonderful way to browse through. You know, genre, rule system, format, uh, stuff that's published in multiple languages. So this is a truly worldly online resource to get your gaming on. Also, they do some really good bundles from time to time. Yeah. Which I always like to take advantage of. And they have, a, I, I guess, a deal of the day as well. Let's see what's this. Yeah, they have, they have a deal of the day. Um so, yeah, Blended Anthology of, it looks like, multiple multiple books. Well, um, multiple file but, formats, softcover, hardcover. So you can have, it's not just uh, PDF downloads, though. No, you can get. Though you can uh, get many different types, including, apparently, there's some 3D models that you could get, too, which is interesting. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, no, um, just recently, a mm -hmm. uh, couple of months back, I got uh, a number of stuff for, uh, Changeling the Lost, I got some hard copies through drive through um, And again, they're, they're the ones that are printing it now. So, hmm. 
you order it directly from them. They're the ones that print it, so you get a fresh book. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. So, Dungeon starter sets. So basically, people that have gone through and have done 3D models of things that could be awesome for your table. You can pay them a pittance. Like, uh, there's one here for a spellcaster that has yep. been 3D printed, and he's uh, 88 cents. If you'd like to to pay, that's nice. That's yeah. That's that's that's, pre- that's a pretty cool dude right there. I go here, and I don't even know about that. Where do I find this? It's under format. <laughs> Yeah, go to format, and uh, let me go back to the main page here. Um, but yeah, I was just noticing. It's like, okay, I'm just going to click and format STL 3D models. And yeah, those are those are the ones that you would be able to just output to your 3D printer. Um, pretty, okay, so yeah, you're, you're not actually getting the miniature itself. You're getting the... You're getting the file, yeah. You're getting the file. Okay, right. that... Now I, I need a 3D printer even more. However, at the, at the same time, you could then... You could then send that STL file off to um, uh, Shapeways, and you could have have them print it. Or if you happen to have a friend with a 3D printer, you could do that. Um, but of course, it's <laughs> going to come out in just plain plastic, so you're going to want to paint it anyway. But you know that's part of the fun of of model making and everything else. Oh yeah. Speaking uh, speaking of which, I've gotten into uh, well because I'm a dad and, and have daughters, uh, I'm. Making dollhouses now, so that's fun. Be- beyond that, let me let me also say I am very proud of you for introducing your daughters to Pathfinder, getting yeah. into gaming. Love yeah, I, d- I did. I got them the basic uh, the basic set, and I'm going to uh, I'm taking uh, taking Evie by by oldest. She's she's nine. I'm taking her through it now, and yeah, it's 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 entertaining. Um, also, since uh, next year we're going to be doing uh, a gaming podcast called Roll Initiative. Uh, in the basic set, in the be- you know the beginner box, uh, there's actually a, an adventure, kind of like a choose your own adventure, uh, for one player. Nice. So my very first uh, first podcast, I think I'm going to talk through that, um, and that's that's going to be kind of an introduction, uh, and it will help learn the system for for those that are that are newbies. So, because I want to make it accessible, so that that way anybody can. Also pick up the podcast and kind of understand what the hell we're talking about. Because that would be fun, too. Mm. It's kind of, there, there's a learning curve. A lot of things that uh, that's like, wait, what are you talking about? Armor class? How, say, what's a saving throw? <laughs> All these questions that my daughter has been asking. You know, things, things like that. <laughs> so it's important. It's important. So we'll be running, uh, running modules and, and things like that to, to get people comfortable with, uh, with how things go. And then we'll get into big campaigns and fun stuff like that. Make up some really good stories. So, but that's uh, that is digressing into the future. David, you have what is this? Amazon.com. Yeah. You've got something that I'm probably going to buy. Okay, you you've bought it. What is that? Is that so? It's just a charging. This is station? a USB C stand. Okay, a uh, charging stand for if you have a USB. C, phone. Okay. Um, there you go. Yeah. So, um, works decently well. Uh, it only charges slow for some reason. Um, huh. It's got the the older style micro USB on the back. That's not why USB. That's why. Uh, so, even though technically there should be the same amount of juice going through. I don't think Not so. Soon. I don't think so, actually, because the the cable types themselves, depending on wh- what you use, is whether or not they're well, even going to be able to. USB C is capable of a lot of wattage. USB C <laughs> is capable of ninety watts. Ninety. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Um, there, there are yeah, there are laptops so, that charge off of USB C. Yeah, um, Apple's new Apple MacBooks do. Uh, so yeah, I've got uh, the, I've got these. The Razer Blade Stealth laptop. Mm-hmm. Now, that the, something that you'll notice with USB-C cables uh, is that they're all pretty thick. They're they're high quality, big cables, um, so that they can actually handle all that. Uh, there was also a rash of uh, bad cables that 
actually were frying devices. Mm. So, yeah, sometimes you got to be careful with this. So with with this little guy, since it's using a micro USB, the best it's going to be able to do is maybe two amps. And yeah, five volt to two point one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have. Well, actually, you know, it might be, it might be able to do a full twelve volt. But again, it depends on what the phone and the charger that's on the backside can actually handle. Um, yeah. But when you're when you're switching cables up, things get weird. Yeah. The other beautiful thing about USB C mm-hmm. is it it's doesn't matter strong. which direction you plug it in. Yeah. It's gonna go. I like that. And th- so oh, this is yeah. only eight eighteen dollars and ninety cents. Put up there. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of fourth dimensional objects. Yeah, no, there is no fourth dimension anymore, and it's this thing's nice. It's got it's got a decent amount of weight to it, so it sits nicely on your desk. Though the uh, connectors isn't quite loose enough yet that I can just take the phone off. I have to actually hold down on the base to, to well, move the phone. If you're fortunate, it will never be that way. Yeah, yeah. If you're fortunate. Um, now, one thing that one thing to be cons- to be concerned with, I have a Nexus 6P. So it, mm-hmm. it would work with this. And it does the quick charging. It does uh, Qualcomm Ch- Quick Charge 3, which mm-hmm. it'll go from, I think, in the 10% range to 90% range in 15 minutes. Not, not on this stand. I know. But here's the <laughs> thing. You don't want it to do that all the time. Mm-hmm. So this kind of thing is perfect for those situations where you don't need to top off very quickly, but you're going to be sitting there a while. Yeah, like my work desk, which like your, is why I got two of them. Exactly. Your, your, <laughs> both your work desk and also your night table. Yeah. So when it's going to be sitting there on the charger overnight, you want it to trickle charge. You want it to go slow. Uh, so this kind of thing actually, believe it or not, even if it's going slow, it might be saving your phone. It we'll could see. it could be doing that, and uh, just because of that, I think I might need to get one. Yeah, uh, they're right. under twenty bucks. Yeah, come in um, several different colors. I got the silver just because it was basic. Yeah, fits everywhere. So I've you know I've got uh, I got this like you know wallet case thing because I don't want to drop my phone again and break <laughs> anything, so it's covered. And in fact, I yeah. even I even went with the. The wrist strap, so I have yet one more <laughs> reason to not drop the phone. Wow. Yeah, I'm serious about it. I do not want to drop you, the phone. You Have you had issues with dropping your phone? Because I dropped it once, I broke the screen once, and I w- had to buy an entire new phone because they didn't have the screen. Oh. Okay. And it's a flagship phone, so it was like $500. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't want to do it again. So this is... This is a nine dollar case, and it's got. A, I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that that so, whole case and everything will probably nest on here because it's got yeah. a. Um, yeah, it's raised up. I see, so it's it would support a notch for the case. Yeah. Do you have a case on your phone? Yes, I do. And it yes. rests quite comfortably. Yeah, you got a big beefy case on there too. It's it's not a beefy case, but. It's decent enough, you put though. The case on there, you can tell that there's there's light peeking under that. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, perfect. If you have a a beefy case, it probably still work. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be ordering uh, one of those. So that's in the <laughs> show notes. Uh, in fact, here's the here's the Amazon page. You can see, there's the. Uh, yeah, there there are some upset reviews from people who are like. It took like an entire day to charge my phone. <laughs> yeah. And I'm uh, I'm not going to rely on this thing to charge my phone. I just want it to keep my phone more or less maxed out while I'm at work. It'll definitely do that, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh now this is interesting. There's a there's a, a slightly less expensive one that has Yeah, when you get when you get into the ones that have the uh the backer to the base, that's yeah. when having the case starts getting weird. Yeah. Because if you don't have a, if your case is too thick in certain dimensions, you're never going to get it to actually 
seat. Rest on the case, yeah. Huh. However, you know, since it is a since that one, if if you absolutely must have it to where it'll top off, you know, quickly, mm -hmm. then this style, because it already has the cable built into it, it is it's probably better. It is most likely going to allow for a quick charge, though. The cable that looks on there, it, it even in the picture, it looks though it's probably just drawn in, <laughs> in the picture. It's probably uh, it looks a little little wimpy compared to the ones that I was just holding up. So, yeah. And then the cable this one came with is is a fairly wimpy, very very thin cable. <laughs> Put it that way. Gotcha. I'm, I'm yeah. comfortable with it. You know, being in a static environment, it's just going to plug into a computer, uh, and then charge from there. But Give if this is something that you want to pack away in your bag every time you go someplace, probably not the best cable. Get a different cable. Probably okay. But it's nice, and and that uh, is there any wiggle to that connector? Uh, the connector itself. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty solid in there. Okay, so that that is definitely a firm firm point. Good. Yeah, that that piece is not like rubberized. It's a solid piece of plastic that it's coming out of. Good it's a to white know. Metal. Good to know. So. Uh, for those of you that have a phone that uses USB-C, then this is the kind of thing for you. And if you're one of those uh, one of those Apple folks out there, uh, basically USB-C is like the Lightning connector. So you'll you'll understand immediately because the Lightning connector is also two way. But yeah, it looks like the yeah. other part of the Lightning connector. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's just a uh, it's actually a little more protected than the lightning connector is, yeah. I think. So, it well, both of them are are pretty robust though. I I find it interesting that you know, USB-C was already in existence when the lightning connector was, you know, put out. But uh, they went with they went with it for whatever reason. Um they had their own own reasons obviously to to do so. Yeah. And then when it comes down to building their new laptops, they put, like, one USB-C on there. That's it. Yeah. For charging, as well as peripherals. But what's interesting is you can plug in uh, a USB-C to USB-C, like this, and into another device with USB-C, and it will allow bidirectional charging. So then your laptop would be able to charge your phone, or your phone, if it's big enough, would be able to charge your laptop. That's insanity. Yeah. Or you could hook two laptops together? Yes. Would it allow that? It, you could do that. I have not seen that happen, though, and it would be very interesting to see whether or not it would allow for data transfer. Right. As a, as a data sync cable. Yeah. Why not? But Because the, um, they have... External like a lap link cable for those old school people um, that operate off of USB C. Yeah, because it has forty megabits per second of data throughput with uh, with Thunderbolt three. Yeah, connectivity. Yeah, it is Thunderbolt three capable of you know the same same data throughput. It's pretty impressive, really, and yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of newer desktops, uh, some of the the HP Elite Pros and things like that. They're also coming with USB C right on the front, you know, the like, little micro boxes. So it's it's a thing. It's, it's the wave of the future. The older USB cables are going to go away. It's all going to be one standard. I hope. <laughs> you can only hope. Yeah, they're actually because uh, so because. The data throughput of like pushing 4K or 10K yeah. to display devices is so intense. They're actually looking at already phasing out DisplayPort in favor of USB-C connections. Whoa, really? Yeah. Dang. Because that's how fast it is. Wow, going for just a pure data connection. You know, also with uh, when you get into monitors with such high resolution. Uh, and I know that Apple had to do this when they built their 5K iMac displays. 
because that was more than the video card, the ATI graphics card, would allow them to push. Some of the graphics processing capability was actually put into the display. There's a daughter card on the display itself that does some of the rendering. So when you get into, into things like that, you're go- we're going to end up with peripherals that actually have computing capability to offload it from lesser capable devices, which is amazing. That's, that's that a wonderful. A central thing. processor yeah. that just sits there and handles it. Yeah. And also with, um, with our, our handy-dandy webcams, uh, some of the newer, well, actually, they're not even newer, but some of them have built-in uh, H.264 encoding. So that's being done <clears throat> on its own. And then it ta- it basically takes that load away from the USB two stream, so then you don't ha- then it do- it it just allows for more more data throughput. And these things, when you're running a 1080p video, yeah, it it really sucks up the bandwidth just to have your webcam on. I know because I have to have a separate USB chip in my computer for every webcam that I attach to the computer that I'm running this show with. Hmm. So if I have guests here, I have to have a separate webcam and each one of them has to be plugged into a different USB chipset on the board. Otherwise it will not, it will not show the graphics. Now, if I had the, if I had these fancy dancy, um, I think they're Logitech pros that have that capability. I might be able to get away with a, with a less capable box. <laughs> Maybe. And save my precious CPU cycle so that there's no data drops or anything like that, and we get a higher quality out to the stream and all things like that. So yes, folks, those are things that I'm considering doing for next year. So how about you uh, support us on Patreon, and then we can, we can make things even better as we go on. But mm-hmm. I think that uh, that's going to be a wrap. What do you gentlemen yeah. think? Oh, New yeah. Year's resolutions. Do you have any? Any New Year's resolutions going into 2017? I'm maintaining the one that I made three years ago where I was not going to make any more New Year's resolutions. All righty. So. That's a good one. Survive. Survive 2017? <laughs> 20, 2017, actually, I think is going to be fine um, because they're going to ride the deregulation train. And the problem with that is that those effects are more long-term than they are short-term. The short-term effect yeah. is that Money gets injected into the market freely with uh, with horrible, horrible things attached to it <laughs> that it's basically a poison pill. Mm. So 2017 is going to be fine. 2018 might be fine as well. 2019, I think, is the one where you're going to want to survive. So coming right up to when we're going to need to do another election, that's when things are really going to start looking bad. Is, uh, is that a prediction here? If. It, if it's, it will either be coming up right on the election, or they'll be able to push off the ill effects until right after the election. Gotcha. And then, then it's going to hurt. Mm. And then instead of doing anything useful, they'll just put band aids on the hemorrhaging wound instead of stabbing in the. Uh, the gunshot clot <laughs> oh. device. Ugh, I understand. Because, Lord forbid, we do something that hurts now, but will save our lives. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Anyways, New Year's resolutions, predictions, gentlemen. Predictions. Yeah. Ugh. Uh. Uh. I can't say necessarily within the next year, but I can say probably within the next four. Um, I'm expecting, I am sadly, honestly expecting one of two outcomes. Either we will see the beginnings of essentially World War III. Jolly. Or, and or we will be engaging in the Second American Civil War. So you're thinking armed conflict. Yeah. Mm. 
I don't know I, how long they'll last. The I don't know how bloody it'll be, but I go with the former. I think it'd be World War Three more than a civil war. Because I don't know. all the all the the neo Nazi groups who are looking at Trump going, if you don't do what we told you that we were going to vote for, uh, we are literally going to march on the Capitol with guns drawn. Um, You're forgetting about American apathy. Except these are not the apathetic people. That's the problem. No, right, no, no. but it's, no, no. But it's it, their guy in charge. The person who's listening to them and working on their behalf is in charge, not the person they hate. <laughs> Going back to the earlier part of no. of the show, again, in studying white supremacists, yeah. is the guys in charge No. People die when you run up against the government. Yeah, but they're not, they're, not, they're not the ones that are going to die. They're going to send other people to die. Yeah, they send other people to die. But it's finding the useful idiot yeah. Yeah. to go and die. And those aren't a dime a dozen. Those are few and far between. Because there's the pain of dying. And most Americans aren't that zealous. You mm. get dollars to donuts. That old reptilian brain back there mm-hmm. says, I want to survive. Also, pain bad. Pain bad. Americans are risk averse. Okay? Yes. So I, 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 the Civil War thing is highly... Highly unlikely. Again, I'm hoping both are, don't come true at all. I can only but. see a civil war after a good eight years of Trump. Yep. With with a heavy indication that the only thing that will come after him is another him. Like if it's eight years of a Trump presidency and then the very next person to run is Mike Pence. Then or, we or might have had enough. Of a Trump presidency, and it's the nation is in such a <clears throat> crisis state that we cannot have elections this year. Ooh, yeah. If elections that, get yep. suspended, that's, that's that's when everybody grabs their guns. That's that's, that's <laughs> pretty a great much scenario. I I'm that's that's bleak. I am, that's bleak. <laughs> but, Again, the, the and more very likely bleak scenario, but still wouldn't result in a civil war, is we have eight years of Trump, and then he props up the most charismatic of the family, Ivanka, to run next. Oh, God. Well, you know what? At least she actually believes in climate change. <laughs> but, that again, of all... Of all the uh, bleak scenarios, that's probably the one I believe most likely to happen. Oh, Never know. Wow. Uh, I think there's... I, th- I think there's enough self-preservation at this point in time because of just how far we've advanced in military technologies that yeah. a World War III is less likely to happen because... Be- mm. It's one thing when yeah. it's a knife fight and no one likes to get stabbed. It's another thing when I'm not just killing you. I'm killing all you and every person around you. That's yeah. how our fights go now. Yeah, but remember, it wouldn't be us. We wouldn't be the ones starting it. We would just be getting drug into it. Yeah. <sighs> I, still, I, would, I would say it, that the, the likelihood that we're going to be into a civil war, a, I think... I can't see that in America right now. I I can't see it for a long time coming. I mean, the the closest that we got to any sort of of that unrest, you know, is is with uh, uh, Ferguson. If you know, we, uh, we just, get, we, riots will happen. Yeah, yeah. That, riot, that riot is a different animal, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, but I, a riot I, is a step. You know, it's it's another step to to that unrest level. Well, yeah, but riot uh, is the language of liberals. Armed uprising is the language of the alt right conservatives, <laughs> like yeah, what you saw in the so. Malheur Refuge. Um, yeah, and those guys picked one of the softest targets possible, occupied it, and then when all of a sudden they got pulled over, Jim Bob decided he, it was it was time that he, 
he rised up against the government and got shot. And then the rest went, we don't want to die. Yeah, yeah. Well, the leaders never want to die. It's it's the pawns that are the ones that are supposed to die and then become the martyrs for a cause. Again, Americans are risk averse. Right. A riot is more likely to happen within the next four years. Oh, that any sort of civil uprising. a riot is more likely to happen in the next three weeks. I, I don't give it that much. Th- no, I no, don't because that's when the inauguration happens. It, I'm talking in the next three weeks. I, I don't <laughs> think a riot will break out. However, a series of protests yeah. um, in D.C., as we covered in previous weeks, <clears throat> because the inauguration committee is dragging their feet on purpose. Right. Preventing them from actually getting any organization. Pulling the permits. Yeah. Uh, and getting the organization in place. Don't, but I can see, you know, civil protests. That, that'll probably happen in three weeks. Yeah. That'll probably happen in six weeks. No. Yeah. Civil protest, yes. But any sort of significant conflict or riots, I don't see happening within the next six weeks at least. Well, it, At least it won't be. States. I'm just saying they're going to happen, but they're not going to be very meaningful. It's going to be like, you know, the Occupy Wall Street. Okay, we're here. We're here for months and months and months, and nothing happens, and they're ignored, and they all just go home. Well, yeah. Again, it's. It, the American media no longer does their job. The, the, yep. the Fifth Estate is essentially dead. Yeah. Actually, that's something that could happen in, within this next year is actually the reestablishment of the fourth estate. Because there's some media outlets just going, nope, screw it. The gloves are coming off. We don't care anymore. And you're not going to stop us. We don't care what paper you throw at us. We're doing investigative journalism. Screw you. Yeah, yeah a, uh, a fact-free the, the culture does, shouldn't <clears throat> exist. We, we have extraordinary re- extraordinary rendition for that. Again, the fourth estate is essentially dead. And corporate America killed it. Mm-hmm. Rupert Murdoch. Yes, who, as we saw in, in, in recent news, is now acquiring even more media. But this time, it's 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 over in the UK. The, the empire has gotten to the point where it itself is its own role. Yeah, well, he also controls most of the most of the media outlets in Australia. I mean, he's yeah. he's global. And look at how far right he's pulled everything. Yep. Yeah. So there's that. Yay. Okay. We um, the the greatest chance we had of armed uprising in the next three weeks would have been if Hillary had won, and then they would have cried foul, saying that there was uh, the election was rigged. Yeah. Um. And somebody I worked they, with actually talked about. Taking his gun to Washington if she if she won. Oh yeah, no they were they that's were like, ready. Yeah, they that, were that's ready great, to go. and then they get shot. Again, risk averse because yeah. I'm sorry, the Secret Service has really good guns. They well, do. I'm, uh, I'm I'm not saying it would be a big loss to our culture. No, you I'm know. saying <laughs> you probably would have had a a couple of folks that would have been, you know, a little trigger happy, but yeah. no, at, my father was in law enforcement, and as he says, if you guarantee death, it stops a riot. Why? Because no one wants to be the first to die. Yeah. Can't really. I do believe we, we, we do need a little bit of cleansing of the gene pool, though. No, yeah. I am no not it's going to provi- sort itself out. I'm not going to say gene pool. That's, you know, that's too far, but... Uh, uh, again, they usually maybe a little chlorine saying, in the shallow end. Would hey, be good. y'all, hold my beer. Check this out. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Except that they're doing this to the whole country. The yeah. no, yeah. the 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 part where they're going to cl- this cleansing of the gene pool, if you will, is going to basically sort itself out uh, because the the great big push is to get rid of all entitlements, right? Except that yeah. adversely, it's, yeah, it seems statistically to be a... heavily weighted hurts people who vote red more than yep. it hurts people who vote blue. All but the reports the, coming out now. However, they've 
the GOP and and the right and the alt right have still managed to convince them to vote out of their best interest consistently for decades. Yeah, but the the thing was, it was always a, a shell game. Yeah, keep voting for us. We're going to get rid of these entitlements that are just holding you back from being a millionaire. Um, this time they might actually do it. Yeah, we we don't have poor people in in the the red states. We have temporarily inconvenienced millionaires. Yeah. Yep. Everybody thinks that they can rise to the top they're, and they're just they're, being held back they by the government. Are due to all become millionaires and the only thing that they need out of their way is government regulations and Mexicans. And Mexicans taking their gerbs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know how accurate all of that is. Uh but yeah, we as a culture, we have become very, uh, very personally risk averse. We don't do that kind of thing. Uh, no. We have to. We all have to be pushed a hell of a lot harder than we already have for no. any for any of that. And to even then, a lot of us are going to go to Canada. Yeah, but we're also the people that wouldn't fight anyway. The people that are going to leave to and go to Canada aren't the people that we're going to, you know, take arms against the government. I mean, no. they, they, they don't even count. They really and, don't. And, and, and most folks, it's not moving to Canada. It's moving to some other place, yeah. usually within their own state, that just has a, 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 a better cost of living. Yeah. yeah. Or That's just, what happens. Yeah, just not to North Carolina, not to Indiana, <laughs> not to well, Ohio. No, no. They yeah. usually don't even leave the same state. It's, it's, Some people yeah. it's going, it's yeah. moving from Miami Seven, 75 to come miles. to Orlando or it, it's, it's moving yeah. from Orlando to, to Destin. go to, you know, Hillsboro where it's e- e- even cheaper to live. It, it's, it's, it's moving counties. It's not even moving states anymore because how costly it is to move. Yeah. You know, the thing yeah. gets me in ever since Trump was announced and all this has gone on, I, I'm, I'm sorry for bringing up this movie because it's not a good movie, but Time Cop. Because <laughs> there is a quote in it from the main villain who's running for president. And it is, when I'm in office, it's going to be just like the 80s. The top 10% will get richer and the other 90% can immigrate to Mexico where they can get a better life. Ouch. Wow. But then look at that going, oh god, that is kind of becoming reality yeah, well, no, yeah the illegal this, this immigrants exactly. are actually abandoning ship because it's better yeah yeah when when and there is an immigration problem of us moving yeah we do have less immigration problems now simply because it's not a favorable environment to emigrate to yeah uh, i mean you're yeah. having entire cities going well what do we do? Uh, are 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 we going to be in a asylum city? Some or not? Some have decided to do it. Uh, California have... on its own. Uh, in fact, that that was one of the stories that uh, you know it, it actually makes sense to bring it up right now. Um, California Governor Jerry Brown says California yeah. is ready to fight President-elect Donald Trump on climate change and probably anything else too. So the more powerful state economies are are ready to bring to bear to get their own agendas done. Well, when you 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 bring in a guy like Brown back, who did everything in the GOP playbook and has yeah. bankrupted Kansas. That's the playbook. Yeah, completely bankrupted that state. It is suffering like it's never had before. Well, and, and he's your guy that you're going to be. You're going to use his playbook for the nation. Yeah, people are going to be hurting, and it's going to be up to your states and local governments, folks, to protect you. Well, <laughs> it depends on whether you think the goal is the continued prosperity and growth of the United States of America. Or whether they want to break this country so they can 
kickstart the Confederacy, bring back all the states' rights. Oh and, wow! And yeah, no, this is a, this is a yeah. level of. But you guys live there. You guys live in the communities where these people talk about the the glory days of the Confederacy. And no, how, it, it, it's it's not even the glory days. Again, it's the glorified days. No, it's no, not that's even more that. accurate, at least. Um, the glorified days of the of the Confederacy. You're, you're, you're talking the hardcore white supremacists. Most people just want to. Well, some of them hear, are even hear and know white supremacists. They're that just... that hmm. they're going to get better paying jobs. They're going to be able to provide for their families. They're going to be able to pay for a roof over their head. And if you tell them that if you vote for them, they'll get that, they'll believe you. There is a lot of that. Yeah. As long as you don't say anything against their God <clears throat> well, and against their racism. Well, speaking, speaking that's of what the God, they're perfectly happy with what you're what you're describing is the prosperity ministry. Mm-hmm. Our you know, Lady it, of Immaculate tax exemption. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the Living Waters Church that, you know, the, the huge stadium sized cathedrals, you know, tens of thousands of people. You know, in there, they're not getting the message of of Jesus. They're not getting the message of Christianity at all. They're getting the prosperity gospel, which is, you know, if you tithe the money to the church, then your seed will be sown, and you will you will reap the rewards tenfold. Mm-hmm. But but they're that, saying they're... that you can be better. You can you don't have to be poor anymore. That was an actual quote. That, that's, that's all the it appeal. takes to tap in as as a, a politician, especially a Republican, mm-hmm. to talk to the base like that, yeah. and they'll believe you. Because as long as you're not knocking them on the social issues that make them uncomfortable, yeah, and, and but, you tell them, if you vote for me, uh, yeah, I'll cut your taxes. You'll get a rebate. You'll get money back. I'm putting money back in your pocket. Not telling them about, well, all those services that you rely on day to day are going to go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your health insurance is going to go away. Not saying where uh, all that the, money is going to come from, that magic money that's going that, to appear in your paycheck somehow or appear the on your tax The maintenance of your roads, the quality yeah. of your, your social services like police, law enforcement, those are going to go away. They don't say that. No. What they're saying is I'm going to put money in your pocket. If you vote for me. And they're going to support yep. the police. They're going to support all those. Oh, we'll, all we'll support yeah. all of that. Support it all. They're not. And no, we're going to, to re-energize our infrastructure. No one asks we're gonna how do they're going to pay for it. Yeah, no, we're going to pay for it by taking away food stamps. Yeah, that, which no, is direct, that which sliver. Which is just... A bunch of moochers that are draining this country of the valuable resources that would otherwise make it right. go. Again, which welfare, is which is also a tiny thing. Which is maybe but we've got to support three percent, like three percent of the discretionary spending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas no. national defense is fifty-seven percent. Again, we buy less tanks, that, and it doesn't matter. We could cut seven <laughs> percent. And send majority of our citizens to college. Yeah. We could cut by 17%. And we could raise yeah. Social Security benefits. And its solvency would essentially be guaranteed for another 40 years. Well, with that, all you have to do is just remove the uh, the income cap. Yeah. But yeah. these I mean, are there's, things there's ways that to do it. no one has the guts to say or suggest and no politician anymore thanks to the dissolution of the fourth estate has to explain their plans yeah no No one one actually has to talk to the people and go here's how i'm going to do this i remember when they're called on it by actual members of the media legitimate people they then start calling about how biased it is or how bullied they are there's a gotcha question yeah yeah it's like it's not Edward a gotcha R. question. would have torn you a new one it's until like, you stormed off the stage or yeah. answered the freaking question. It's like it's only a gotcha question if you don't got anything. I, 
but <laughs> it's up to the fourth estate to have a backbone mm-hmm. and do their jobs. <clears throat> You hold I saw, the feet to the fire because you have the power. Yeah, you have to understand that. You have to believe that, and you have to work for it. In, in the past five years, I did see one uh, unfortunate senator actually enter the wolves' den. <laughs> uh, but they weren't journalists that he was talking to. They were investors. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah, they're money men. It was... I believe it was uh, MSNBC or CNBC. It was um, uh, uh, the Power Hour lunch. Five oh, investors hmm. and some senator got on there, and they they grilled him apart. <laughs> well, those, they have those are goals, senator. We want to know what your plan is. Yeah, they have genuine well, I'm gonna, questions. I'm going to increase jobs. I'm going to decrease taxes. Th- th- those are, those are still goals. It's like and how. Are how? Going to that. How are you going to do that, sir? Oh, it was it was beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> lay it was lay this out for and us. Sad. Mm-hmm. Again, shareholders to ask those questions of 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 their 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 corporate lackeys. The corporate leadership and the corporate leadership better have an answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that conference call that you have to have everything laid out. Um, yeah, but it the fourth estate no longer does its job. And it's. I think the fourth estate doesn't even know that that fourth estate is a concept. Well, they're just they're just there very far anymore. They're just there smiling and selling selling soap and and showing you what the weather is going to be. And then oh look, if it bleeds, it leads, and it's going to lead for the entire twenty four hour news segment. You know they're filling airspace. I, yep. Even local news, it, if it bleeds, it leads. Well, local news We're is even, also filling filling airspace. It's you don't even get human interest stories anymore. The human interest it's stories just that who you do got get. Shot. There are human interest stories, but yeah, they're only we don't care about who got shot. Well, no, anymore. they're only on the news website. They are re- relegated to the the media. <clears throat> okay, a friend a friend of mine works at a TV station in Orlando. Or at least okay. he worked there. Uh, and anything that happened in the local stuff that actually mattered, that had real substance, community events, any any of that, it all went to the station website. Seriously. It all went to the website. So, essentially, real reporters have been forced to become bloggers by their own media empire. So now there really is no difference between a blogger who is going out and finding his own information and a reporter who is ending up doing the same thing because the only place it ever ends up is on the web as a blog. That's, you know, this is what I've seen. This is a witnessed event that is happening uh, in Orlando. You're not wrong. So, yes, we are now a news organization. Yay! Because I can just say that, right? Yeah. Who, who says that I'm not? Hmm. I'll say we have hand, more you can't just say that you're news. aware. I cannot say I'm a lawyer, but lawyers have to be, there's a, a vetting bar. There's the yeah, Bar Association. Um, you have to pass a test. There's yes, nothing for years. press. There's nothing for press. Again, there, there, there's only the legitimacy of getting your, your associated preps, press badge. If you're a member of sure. the AP, you get access. But that's and, the associated press. They yeah. are a different animal because their stuff gets syndicated to the local media anyway. But the local reporters, yeah, they would still get a press pass. Yeah. But 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 the AP is 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 the last holdout, the last guard, Reuters. essentially. Or Reuters yeah. or whatever you want to yeah. however they pronounce it these days, I can't even yeah. tell. Reuters, I believe. Yeah. But that's that's the last bastion. It really yeah. is. And they're getting drowned out by video bloggers. 
They're just getting drowned yeah. out, period. They're just drowned out, yeah. yeah. Because, again, because blogging has now taken on the same... Legitimacy. Re- the same relevance. It's not even legitimacy, it's just relevance. Because there are, there are some bloggers out there that really take advantage of it. They don't want to be... Uh, they they don't want to be pinned down by their their corporate overlords anyway. Mm-hmm. They want to tell the stories they want to tell, right? And not yeah. Now even in uh, you know as as I've been going through my my media and uh, watching Daredevil, mm. um, yeah, you know, that one of the one of the reporters ended up getting sacked. What does he do? He becomes a blogger immediately. The only thing is, he did have an audience because he was an actual reporter. Eh, Well, they killed him. Spoiler. Sorry. But that's the kind of thing that, wow, that's art imitating life. Yeah. Because that's that's what's happening. There are many people that have been in the media that got fed up that then ended up with their own their own stake, their their own thing, whatever they were doing. The Blaze is a fantastic example of that. That's exactly what happened. Built his own. When media Beck empire. fell out of favor with Fox News, yeah, yeah, things happened behind closed doors. He left, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and now he runs the Blaze website yeah. and competes with the likes of Alex Jones. I'd much prefer to watch Glenn Beck any day of the week than Alex Jones. Alex Jones is a, is an absolute wackadoo. I um, got three minutes into uh, uh, Alex Jones' latest video this morning. Was uh, and I could could not could it, not go. Did he pretend to be a, much? Did he he change voices and do the lizard man thing, or did he actually wear a mask? I mean, he's done that before. No, he <sighs> was just like he's conspiracy theory ADD. Oh, he's crazy. So he was like. I I get that the shit that I say is far fetched, but I can show you the logic train that got me there. And if I lay it out, you can see how it makes sense in that pattern. He again, has none of that. Again, I, <laughs> he, I has, he ain't got time for that. Okay, I mean this in all seriousness. I don't want anything. I don't want somebody to go nuts and you know take him out or anything else. But the moment I hear, and it is confirmed, that Alex Jones has died, at this point more than likely through aneurysm or extremely high blood pressure, I will cheer. (laughs) (laughs) I also believe the collective intelligence of the world will go up by at least five points. He'll just be replaced. His his kind are a dime a dozen. He just has the name legitimacy until he gives it up to go live a quiet life. Or um, he dies. At this point, in my opinion, as this is where I put the tinfoil on, Rush dies of some sort of heart heart failure due, due to his abusing of drugs and other substances. Mm-hmm. And Alex Jones becomes the new Rush. We're in that kind of era. Mm. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I think they're different programs. January 8th of 2016, uh, a a media organization that I respect a great deal called Right Wing Watch. Um, Mm -hmm. They they keep watch on, well, the right wing. It's amazing how things actually work out that way. Alex Jones, maybe aliens really do run the world. Um, Donald Trump appeared on conspiracy theorist Alex Jones' radio program last month and hailed Jones' amazing reputation. Uh, right Wing Watch pointed out that, among other beliefs, Jones has promulgated on his InfoWars network. He has floated the idea that space lizards control the world, even dressing up as one for a segment on the dangers of Obamacare and vaccines. There's a clip. It's special. Yeah. Yeah. It's right here. I'll, 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 I'll. I'll. No, I'm sorry. I have to remove that from him. That's the Gorn mask. No. 
Forget all the secrets. And the top hat. The has been done yeah. Yeah. The population. All the syphilis and the vaccines. The yeah. I can't hear any sounds. It. Good. Uh, syphilis and vaccines is completely reasonable. Yeah, he's he's basically uh, expounding on what he thinks Obamacare actually is. But what's he care? He makes so much money. And he probably has a pretty sweet insurance plan. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones, give him a hand. Yay. InfoWars. If anybody ever puts InfoWars into your news feed, just block them immediately. They're not Unless worth they're your doing time. it just to go, look how crazy this asshole right, is. Right. That's okay. That's. Uh, the, yeah. If I will recommend YouTubing Alex Jones Goes Super Saiyan. Because that, it's, it's. Roughly, I think, eight seconds of your life that is worth, <laughs> worth I will, watching. I'm going to put, uh, I'll, I'll put the Alex Jones 13 thing. seconds. 13 seconds? I'm yeah. going to put the Alex Jones thing uh, under our picks section uh, for, <laughs> for anyone that wishes to actually go out and, and take a look-see at it. What 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 did you what are you looking at, Stephen? Your your face Alex explains. Alex Jones super becomes Saiyan. a Super Saiyan. It's oh, <laughs> frighteningly accurate. <laughs> it's thirteen seconds. It's worth it. If you ever see anything about, if you ever have to watch anything about this guy, okay. it's worth watching just that thirteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> uh, I just rewatched it. Oh my goodness. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> I refuse to yeah, go I'll, along I'll with this. I'm seeing yeah. through all of your lies, Barack Obama, you Is wicked, it? wicked devil. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, we've gone off the rails a bit, maybe. That's fine. Oh my gosh! So good though. <laughs> um, what the hell? It's just it's. I don't know. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> uh, and the fact that he believes all this crap is the frightening part. Does he? I mean, yeah. He I strikes me as so. McCarthy. No, oh, he's, he's bought he, into it. Well, he 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 started out not buying it, but showing it to the the masses. Now he's starting to believe his own shit. I remember the him at the beginning, at has... the beginning when I first ran to him, was doing these one of the hardcore, almost Michael Moore documentary style things, going after the Bilderberger Group mm-hmm. and the worldwide Jewish conspiracy. Yeah, but that gets uh, eyes on you because there's plenty of people who believe that stuff. Yeah, it's like the the lie has its own life, and it's a tulpa. Uh, uh, before before Alex Jones was big, I think the big thing was Art Bell. Yes. Oh Art boy. Bell. Yeah. Ah, oh, going old school. Yeah. Yeah. These uh, and and he had like I remember the first time some it was one of my dad's friends came over and, and pulled up ArtBell dot com. Like, oh, what's this? Wow, that was a rabbit hole. <laughs> That, but Art Bell, Lee, that's an insult to rabbits, sir. From, from back in the day when I was when I listened to him <laughs> was on the music thing, Art Bell at least was less hardcore uber political conspiracy and more just aliens and really weird paranormal crap. Yeah, he stuck to his guns and didn't step over the line. Alex Jones decided he doesn't to, have he doesn't have the ability to draw lines. He has swan dived off the infinite pit. He looked into the abyss, and it absorbed him. <laughs> no, he looked in the abyss, and the abyss went, you're crazy. <laughs> and the abyss went, no, stay out. Oh, God, get it off me. <laughs> and he's still there. <sighs> yeah. 2016, ladies and gentlemen. 2016. 2016. 2016. Here's, Here, here's, here's another one that's, that's worth your time. It's 14 seconds. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if 
Okay, let me switch back over. Kino, we're under attack! Lino, we're breaking the conditioning! We're coming for you, globalist! Coming for you! There's so many of these. Why? Why does? Why is this a thing? Why? Why is he a thing? So good. Oh my god! It's better. Like the that's the only redeeming feature to Alex Jones' existence is these Super Saiyan videos. That's it. There's that's all there. Yeah, there, there's a lot of a lot of little clips of of him just going absolutely crazy. Uh, <laughs> and the description stuff. Alex Jones goes Super Saiyan three cancer warning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. Saw that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well. Um, yeah. I I can't do it anymore. Any. I can't do it yeah. anymore. Uh, no. Here's the hoping that 2017 is less bleak. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be full of hope. Uh, when they deregulate the financial markets, there will be tons of money everywhere, and the economy will temporarily boom. So, Well, I can say this. Unlike 2016. 2017, we're going in, but we're not going in unknowing. No. We're not going, okay, we have this election coming up. No, none of that. Everything's been decided. We have our starting points. We know where we're setting, and we know what we need to do. There is no uncertainty in 2017. Let's go. Let's fight. Do you think Trump will get all of his cabinet picks through? He'll oh. get enough of them to cause an immeasurable harm. Given how much money is in his cabinet, yes. But I mean, if all of them, like they, they, Not all um, the vast majority. I think it was. I forget which one it was. They rejected one of them, and he replaced it that pick with another pick that was exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Like the, he has no shortage of these people. Like, hey, oh, the, well, there isn't, there you isn't there is, like that one. Like I got 10 more. <laughs> it is a never ending cornucopia basket of deplor- deplorables. Oh yeah. No, he's going to get somebody like all of his picks are people that actively want to destroy and diminish the agencies that they will be overseeing all of them. No, there is no exception to that rule so far that I've seen. Um, I, it's it's amazing and, and how people if, are if salivating you just look at that. Around in, in the circle, the right wing circles that believe that government is everything that is wrong in their lives, there's no shortage of those people he can pick from. And no, 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 no shortage at all. So he will get his people in there. They're all the same. <laughs> the only thing that changes amongst them is the name. <laughs> but they're all going to destroy their respective agencies. And Again, the, the advantage I think they have, or he's going to have with those picks is, unlike him necessarily, the picks probably will listen to Congress and everything else because they have literally funded a lot of these congressional campaigns. So it's an interesting circle. Yeah. That's that's an idea, but I don't know if they they can't be held accountable though. You know, cause, no. because they're they're already they're already super rich. What's the worst that happens? Trump pardons they just, them for a crime they haven't even committed, and then they commit the crime. Well, no, remember, but beyond that, it's also well. That's the worst thing that happens to us. That's not the worst thing that happens yeah. to them. I'm talking about the, the, to them. You oh, know, they just go home. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, there's no downside when you're yeah. that rich. Yeah, no, they just go home. You just pull the strings, you become more rich, and then you, you go to Russia and <laughs> live a nice life. <laughs> yep. You, you go uh, where you sent your, um, sent your money, down to the Caymans. Yep. Yeah. Sip Mai Tais. Light cigars with $100 bills. Ride around on private jets and private yachts and... And just unplug from the worries of the world. Damn, we're jaded. Damn. <laughs> no. Well, if I we actually, we if we, we <laughs> prosecuted, you know, those responsible for financial collapses, like, you know, Iceland. Iceland. 
Yeah, no, you <sighs> you cannot punish the people in charge. Oh, yes, you can. It's called Iceland. <laughs> Not here yeah. in the United States. Not in the United States. Yeah, Iceland's a different type of government where they had the option to do that. We don't. It wasn't necessarily it's, having the option. It was having the will. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah, it's entrenched power. Yeah. Well, Here in the United States, it's just so much entrenched power, they can they skirt around it. single-digit approval ratings and 95% retention of their jobs. It's, it's absolutely absurd. Like, if your During approval rating drops below 10%, that should automatically disqualify you from being reelected. I think that's that that should be a thing. But it, it, I like it, that it, idea, it, but no, that's not no, a thing. because I, I, that would get a whole new crop of people in there at the very least. Okay, I, let, I don't the, think it should be approval ratings. I should. I think it should be you know growth of GDP. <laughs> well, we, well, we even, need I, a, would, I would disagree with that, but most also, I, I, continuous I, growth is unsustainable. I, I love the idea of, hi, members of Congress. Yes, you get all the benefits packages. However, your 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 salary is the minimum wage. Should be. It should have been that way from the beginning mm-hmm. of the minimum wage. Yeah. You get all these wonderful benefits, but your salary is the minimum wage. The only way to raise your salary is to raise the minimum wage. Bing! Yeah, but that won't happen ever. No, because they can vote for their, they, their own salaries. Yeah, they appoint they appoint their own salaries. I mean, that's which I madness. don't know why that's that that's there. That's it's insane. Madness. Yeah, it I would like to. Daddy. I'd like to select my own salary too, and I'd like to vote yeah. on my raises. That'd be fantastic. I I just want all of the money. I would just like them all to be barred from ever holding a private office again. A private office, as in they cannot work as like a lobbyist or for any private corporation or everything else. So you get not, once they leave, you office. become an elected official like that. Wonderful. Guess what? You have essentially decided to be a civil servant for the rest of your life, or to work for nonprofits, or things like that. You are no longer allowed to be. You can't go from there to be a lobbyist or a CEO of a corporation hmm. or any of that. You make the choice. Okay, you have made a lifetime career choice. I'm okay with them being able to to get out and then change careers. Because that you happens. should be able to change careers. Yeah, you know, you go into politics, hate the ever living hell out of it, and then decide to do something else. That that should be okay. I think that the being part of the government should be a service where you are forced to start at the bottom hmm. and then work your way up. Well, what you mean? You can't just buy your way in? Precisely. That's that's not a possibility. Even though we saw that that's exactly what happened. Now, you yeah. Buy your, you buy your How way. do you, you mean start at the bottom? It's just like military service. No, but I'm saying you in start at the ways. lowest rank in government at a state level. Hmm. You have to go through state level, work your way up through state level before you can go to federal level. Okay. I would I would say I don't know starting at the lowest level of state level. But so, I agree the idea of starting at state level before you can go to federal. So to be a a congressman to be for a your congressman state. or representative, you should have familiarity at the state level of what that job entails. Well, I'd, I'd say you'd have to have at least been a governor or a like. state senator or representative. Yeah. So in the state house. Yeah, you have to have served yeah. in the state legislature before you can move on to the to the to the actual house. That, mm, I kind of disagree with that just because I I know state oh, it, legislature versus this is moot federal anyway. is kind of those are very very different animals. It's yeah, but this would also anyway. make that change. Uh, yeah, but no one would, yes no uh, no one would ever yeah. vote for it. Oh yeah, our our current system. No, too. it would have yeah. the the system as it is, is has been exploited. We would we would have to, I mean here's here's the real mind. We'd experiment. have to have another constitutional convention. Here's the thought mm-hmm. experiment. Maybe in eight years we have to. Yeah, maybe we have to come up with 
a way that the people that are in power now would still be able to vote for something that would actually be a reform. It has to be something that doesn't hurt them. I think it'll be grandfathered in. Just a grandfather (laughs) clause? If you're already there, you don't count? Yeah, if you're already there, okay, cool. You don't get kicked out of it. You're there. Okay, good. You are legally elected to that position under the old rules. Just because we changed the rules doesn't mean you are now invalid. However, I, I because of how the RNC and the DNC work, uh, but the party s- the party system the, the party system is not part of our government. Yeah, but following the money, as we often do. Yeah, well, we have to. The money says that this will never happen. Yeah, because the system is already a, in place. I know that's why it's the, a thought the, experiment. The, yeah, the, how the, would you the, do it? There, there is no way to convince the party system that this is in their best interest. It's not just convincing the individual politicians. It's convincing the system. I know yeah. how how almost conspiratorial and bleak that sounds. No, actually, I could see them going for it because it would allow you them to more perfectly groom members starting at the lower levels. And kicking them up, and they would have a constant report card on what they're able to do and whether or not they should be allowed to get the higher levels. But voters like a dark horse. But voters don't matter. Voters do matter when it comes to getting those wonderful donations from the wealthy voters. And that's wealthy the only voters thing, yeah. like a dark horse. Well, they like the people that can be manipulated to do what they want. Uh-huh. They want a dark horse. They want an outsider because that's what appeals to the current zeitgeist. Well, that's the current zeitgeist. When the pendulum swings, which what will be next? Only time will tell. Yeah, for the Here's for the pendulum. For the pendulum, it does swing, and the clock of the pendulum is about to strike one a.m. here in Florida. 1 a.m. on New Year's Eve, 2016. So, ladies and gentlemen. I made a casserole dish of creme brulee. Go enjoy that, man. That sounds absolutely That's, delicious. I can't think of a better way. It's resting right now. You have to give it at least 12 hours um, for the flavors to really meld. And then it's. So then it'll, it'll be ready in 12 hours, what you're saying. <laughs> oh no, less than that. But I'm bringing it to a a New Year's game night and. Okay, well, here's what I need you to do. I need you to tell me when it's going to be ready, and I need you to give me the address so I can go ahead and plan my flight. <laughs> okay, well, it's going to be in Shakopee, Minnesota. I can parachute that. I've never done it before, but I'm sure I can pull it off. <laughs> okay, I'll skydive into it, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's ready. And I've even got, it was actually a Christmas gift. I've got the torch to uh, to bake the sugar on. Excellent. Now on that note. On that note, it is now, the clock has struck one. And that is it for tonight. We'll be back live next year in 2017 at Woo! roughly 930 Eastern on Fridays. Uh, in the meantime, uh, visit our webpage, and from there you can watch us live. You can chat with us during the show. And you can keep up with everything that we're doing and all the the new stuff that's going to happen in 2017. Keep that conversation continuing. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, Google Plus. Subscribe to the podcast for the audio version of the show and YouTube for and Twitch channels for the uh, for the video version. Of course, you can watch us live join in the chat, which I have already said because I'm tired. And uh, if you've enjoyed (laughs) what we've uh, done here today and throughout the entire year and you'd like to help us out, here are a few ways. You can donate to the show through patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash radio, and get early access to full show content. Also, uh, how about you leave us a review on iTunes? That helps the show gain audience with new users. And uh, tell somebody about the show. Word of mouth advertising always is 
a number one way to get to get in front of other people. And of course, engage with us directly. How about you send us a message on the social media or the electronic mail at Podcast at gmail.com. Or if they're more talkative sort, there's a voice number, 470-222-6759. It's always ready to take your call or your text. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Axe Company. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you in 2017. Be good to yourselves and uh, and others, and, uh, you know, take the high road when you can, and, well, when you're down in the dirt and fighting, uh, fight dirty. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye-bye.